Sure, if you care. Oh, you can't hear me. I want to share it, folks. Share it out oh. there. Um. Can you hear him now, John? I can hear you, yeah. There's music playing, but I can hear you. Hey, how can are you? Hear him? Live. Hey, look at on TV. I can hear you. Hold on. Yeah, I got my music on right now. Hello. I hear you, Phil. No. You feel you sound good. Can you hear me? I'm muted. Hello. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Hold on. They got so many Wi Fi's and it's hooked up. You can't hear me. It's okay if you can't hear us, Phil. Audio difficulties are part of fun. But I can see him. Hey, can you see me now, bud? He's talking. Stop this thing. This is going to happen every time. Hey, Charlotte, you're live. I hear you. Oh, no. Turn your oh. volume up. Hello. Hi, John. All right, good. Thank you, Charlotte. You guys get ready. Tell them you're ready. Oh, wow, folks. Week 54, Phil and John zone. Um, can you hear me now, Phil? I can hear you, John, loud and clear. How about How about you? You sound good, buddy. Wow, it's pretty down there and where you're at in Tennessee someplace, I think is the name of the place, huh? That is correct. I am in Tennessee going to see Mo at the Caverns in a half an hour tonight and tomorrow. Seriously, good shows are going to happen down there. That's going to be fun. We're going to take a shuttle from the campground and the Caverns is 15 minutes away. And i um, super excited. Uh, so is Scooby. Hi, Scoobs. Scooby, Scooby's super stoked. He's got Scooby, yeah. super Scooby stoked ability. It's about 90 in the sun and about 60 in the shade. It's absolutely perfect. We're on top of a mountain. We're at the highest point. We went to the waterfalls and excursion this morning. Beautiful in Tennessee. Long ride place. And uh, great to see you, John, on week 54. Um, before you know it, we're going to be doing everything together on weekends, you know, at least once a month. Yeah. You know, last week I was away and this week you're away. So that's kind of, I guess that makes it kind of fair. Yeah, we need a vacation from each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Scooby and Chester will meet up and be buddies. That's right. That's right. Oh. You got your lineup for summer solstice yet? I'm working on it. I'm working on it right now. I've got Jenny B on the lineup for sure. My friend Tom Johnson. I think Pete Jive, if he can pull it. Um, maybe Cluster Pluck, but we're not sure. Um, Jerry Garcia and the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And um, I, whatever happens, happens. Right now, it's kind of in the air because there's so much going on between now and then that I have to like... Uh, Correct. The Correct. Brain. The brain's only going to like do so much for me and I have to kind of keep it where it's um, in a reasonable place, you know? I'm excited. It's going to happen. It's going to happen June 18th and 19th. In my house in, in Indicator, my Fight the Farm Indicator. I I know where was, I, you told me it was three days. <laughs> You're invited for three days. Yeah. Me and Chester and Laura will be there. You come yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday if you want to, man. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. It is absolutely uh, just spectacular out here. Long ride. 
it's unusual for me, unusual understatement to be not a driver, but a backseat passenger for 10 hours. I don't think that's happened in, since I was a kid with dad. That was weird. Yeah, at like 8.30 this morning, I was told that if I came down there, I would have tickets into both nights for free. Or you could I could have bought them. But the idea was that I didn't feel like jumping in the car when Amy was still sleeping and then driving 10 hours to – it'd be seven hours for me. It's still a long way, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And you could have camped with – I mean, we got a <laughs> – we got the fire pit ready. We went shopping at Figgly Wiggly. We're going to, yeah, it's just a beautiful, I don't explain it. It's just, uh, this is what uh, we like doing. And yeah, and it, it, it's funny um, doing this, uh, setting up, not vending. That's basically why Laura and Charlotte Baker uh, said uh, out of the box, we're going to do something without you. Yeah, it's good for you. You actually get to hang out and do some do some enjoying of the show, which you don't always get to do, you know. And um, Yeah, and that is fair. Very correct. Even I though I, mean, even though I painted some old albums for tonight, Let's see. <laughs> I, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't do that very often. Where I actually just go to a show. I'm doing that Saturday though. Tomorrow night we're gonna go see Chicago Farmer because Chicago Farmer's playing Rose Bowl tonight. And tomorrow night. Right and on. I think it's actually maybe indoors or on the patio. I'm not sure. There's tables. You had to reserve a table. So we're going with Zach and Colleen from Shoe Fest. Zach Swinderman. All right. Right on. Right yeah. Them tomorrow night and just go see a show. I might take my sketchbook, but I'm not gonna set up and paint or anything like that. Um, yeah, uh, Chicago Farm in the Field Notes uh, might be uh, doing it. They're playing at the Joliet Prison by us. Well, hello? It's still there. I just put, just put Scooby in the waiting room. Yeah, we're still there. Didn't change you, though. Eh? Yeah, um, I got a black screen, but I can see me. Um, Wipe it. Yeah, Farmer in the Field Notes. And I think 10, 15 bands are playing at a Joliet Old Prison with food trucks, vendors, all sorts of eclectic stuff in Joliet. Um, it was just announced this week, so that looks really uh, uh, different and cool. Just show us around there. Turn your camera around. Show us what you can see from there, Phil. You got your eyes are like mesmerized on the world. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Well, I got this small. There's like eight zip lines. It's like a golf course. You go from one tree to a zip line. Uh, to another, to another. This morning, I was up early as always, and an armadillo came right across. I go, hi, Texas. They got a band playing at the campground tomorrow. We will be at Mo. There's our campsite. There's Laura and Charlotte. The girls, are you ready? And he's getting right. ready to go to a concert. Full of, we got the, the okay. We're gonna go up there. And then you, we'll see if that um if we can get anything streamed from there. But we'll see what happens. We're gonna play it by ear tonight. Why do I at a black screen? Swipe left or yeah. right. Uh, we gotta hop on a bus at uh, four thirty shuttle bus, and we're gonna be at the venue at five. And then we're gonna be uh, tailgating in a can in a parking lot stationary for about an hour and a half. I'm gonna to try to zoom back in. Well, I'm gonna try and uh, and see uh, you know, Mo doesn't start till eight, but we'll be tailgating and I'll zoom in from there. John, if you got some guests, can you hold the show the fort down as I always do? Yeah, what we're gonna try and do tonight is we're gonna have like an open mic situation or if anybody wants to come in the room and play a song or just say hello, shoot the shit with us, um, feel free. I put the link in the pinned comment on Facebook so you can find it there or on the Phil and John's own page. It's a password and login. So all you have to do is, um, we already got somebody coming in. My friend Seth is already popping in the room here in a minute. So we're gonna bring him in a few minutes back. Once you get, well, I gotta wait and see what happens. So we lost both of everything. Are we all frozen? What happened here? Sometimes the Phil and John zone is a multiple fun thing that happens, and sometimes it just happens in, in little waves of excitement. And we'll cut back with Phil in a little bit. He's going to be um, he was going to be going in and out all night tonight, folks. He's at an event. He's out having a good time, which is where we all want to be, and we all get to be from time to time. But we can't always all be there. We can't all be there tonight. You know, we can't all be there every night. It's, uh, I can't do them all. I don't do them all. I don't. Gosh, you know, there's so many that happen, and I, I don't do them all. There's no way. Because it would just be ridiculous to do them all and to think that, I mean, just think that you could do them all. That's not what would happen. But we got lots of fun things that are going to happen tonight. I got a fun things to share. We're going to bring some people into the room, sing songs, say hello in a few minutes. 
Um, we welcome you to the Phil and John Zone again. Um, this is a little, I'm going to show some clips from my um, from the video that we produced. Um, so just start this one right here. And check it out for just a second while I get a couple things together, folks. And we're gonna we're the Phil and John Zone. We psyched for football season. Birds. Yeah, I know. Is the I know it's Shane Bird. Bird. I know John Tucker. Omar Lujan from Joyful Bubbles. You're live. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Check my Check my mic. Check Last fall at the Sugar Creek Music Festival. Don't do it. One of my favorite bits. Don't drink my heart. <laughs> Bring my friend Seth Simon into the room now. Assuming that's the Seth that's logged to join in here real quick here. I can't remember the rest of the words, but something along those lines. Don't do it. There he is. Hey Seth, what's up, buddy? So this little clip here, it'll get right back to things here. We have a good time in the Phil and John zone. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Let me turn this down so I can hear. Hot dog, good. <laughs> hey, hey. Up, Seth, how are you, buddy? Hey, good to see you, man. Right on. That's the face I like to see right there. My friend Seth Sedman here, folks. Say hello. Um, if you get a chance to, it's um, how you been, buddy? I'm good. Excellent. Well, you're live. There to get some jokes or something. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm gonna get my headphones so we don't get the feedback. All right, cool, man. I like feedback, feedback, feedback. Now this whole thing's going. Wah, 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 wah. I need to eat the balloons. What's up, Jeffrey Black? What's going on, buddy? Yeah, tonight's gonna be a random night of interesting things that happen. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a. Um, we're gonna call it a hodgepodge. Hodgepodge of uh, entertainment and fun and, and, and the good times that are to, are still to come. So tell your friends, tell your mom. We're going to hold on for as long as we can. <laughs> Excellent. My wife just didn't know if she's going to stop by and see her mom for a few nights. <laughs> yeah. I like feedback, man. It's like a Jimi Hendrix hour. Getting ready to do another show in a couple weeks, folks. John Harper Memorial Camp out. It's coming up in two weeks at the Bean Blossom. If you have the RV pass, you can go there pretty much. Just ro roll in there and have a good time. 12 bands, three nights of music. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, what's up, buddy? You can hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're all good. It's working then, buddy. How you been, Seth? What's going on, buddy? Oh, just fine. Just fine, you know. Living that, that lockdown life, but getting out there. Yeah, finally myself. We were we're fully vaccinated now, and we went out to Missouri last weekend, and then got to be outside for a little bit around some people. That was pretty fun, actually, be around people. It was it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The reason you're probably getting an echo. Do you have your radio on? It's like when the old days when they had the radio station. You got to turn your radio down, or turn down the stream on Facebook or whatever. Either way, either way, it's good to see you, bud. Now, normally we do. Do you collect records, Seth? What's that? You collect records. No, but I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you look great. <laughs> it doesn't. I'm trying to fix my mic so it doesn't mess up. Well, so I, I don't get this loop and feedback. Now is your Facebook, you got the Facebook uh, feed open still? That's the problem. If, if that's playing and you can hear that too, then you're going to get all this wacky woo woo. There, we should yeah. be good now. Now you're, you're good set. now. Be just like the boobie doobie doobie. Yeah, you have to get volume. You feeling here? You're in maybe that was crazy. Yeah, I can't hear anything anymore. I, I mean, we're here, we're good. Yeah, <laughs> okay, good, good. Holy guacamole, how are you doing, buddy? Oh, now I can hear everything and there's no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that the sound thing on this has been, it's been a challenge since the very beginning. There's a couple of buttons in Zoom that you can change things, and if you don't do it right, then it all and when somebody pl plays guitar and sings, it picks up either the guitar or their mic, and you get this like broken well, well, thing that happens sometimes oh, okay. oh that's oh that's crazy well hey i wanted to show you something that i've been working on uh amidst this pandemic time 
uh, kind of, you know, had to make some little projects to keep my mind busy, uh, just to, you know, stay healthy and be active. Um, and something I decided to do was take apart some broken action figures that I either got because they were discarded or whatever. I took them apart and put them back together in my own way. And uh, well, here's the first one I made and he's almost done now, but here's Cthulhu. There you go. I made him out of a, out of a broken Malbolgia from the Spawn 1999 movie. I got this figure for $5 and free shipping on eBay. Nice. Yeah, made it and it took it all in, apart, made it my own. Because it wasn't in the box. It was it was a little malfunction. So it was able- oh, it was in the box too. That was the thing. It was all beat up. Uh, the thing is, uh, historically speaking, like ironically, when the original Spawn movie came out in you know 1999 and the time of the dinosaurs, um, <laughs> ironically, they didn't have any action figures for the movie. So Todd McFarlane, the guy who makes all the action figures and comic books already, was like, holy crap, how do we not have action figures? Put a big rush on them. And because they did, many of them were defective. This big, bad, nasty guy, like his knees were defective. They would use like a hot press uh, mold going onto a cold press mold. So, So it would basically join that joint and not make it workable. And people would be like, well, no, that knee's supposed to bend and try and force it, and it would break. Well, a lot of times that happened. And it happened with this dude. So, you know, I've got, oh, check this out. Yeah, you think, and Spawn, that was kind of a darker movie. So toys weren't the first thought in their mind, I think, probably. <laughs> no, no. Well, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, right. It's like the blood pool toys. They're selling, but it's an odd concept. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Got this uh, this corner shelf at a thrift store for two bucks. Decided to make it his throne, and I'm I'm sculpting it and gonna stick it on the wall. It's gonna be like Relea, or I'm not sure how it's actually pronounced from H.P. Lovecraft, but it's gonna be pretty cool. It's coming along. That's got the stalactites and whatnot. Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible, Seth. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeffrey Blackman, there's a Jeffrey Blackman. In a few minutes, get get yourself in the room. You got five records. You'll bring you in here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is um this is Phil and John's on episode 54. All of a sudden, Seth, we've been doing this for 54 weeks, and um, we kind of missed last week. I didn't have very good reception, so I just did like a couple live few minute music feeds on the page, and and didn't really get to do a, an actual show last week. That's okay. And and this week, Phil's out of town, so he's. He's having a blast. He's down there partying in Tennessee at the at the cavern in Tennessee. So, so that's really cool too. You know, it's it's um, what are you gonna? That's what we want to do. We want to be doing. We want to be gone so we can't do the show. Or we have to do it for yeah. phones or something. That's ideal. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I I'm just glad that you're doing the show, and I'm just glad that you know. There's a smile on your face. There's a smile on mine. I got a little sun today, dude. <laughs> I was in the sun a little bit today too. The only thing I put sun on was my tattoo. I didn't put sun anywhere else. <laughs> you know, I was like, Ain't that always the way? I'm not really worried about anything else, I guess, right now. But yeah, there was um, I went out, out for a little bit today. I was gonna mow the yard. I came home and I got home and I sat in the backyard for a few minutes and decided, nah, I'll wait till it's a little cooler. Oh. Could be fall, but <laughs> me and the dog hung out though, so that's all right. There's, there's Scooby sleeping. Yeah, my cat. Eddie, he's huge. Uh, he is wherever he wants to be because, I mean, the house is his anyway. You know? so, <laughs> I'm pretty sure his napping somewhere. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Dude, you're, uh, sorry. Well, you're my your guest all of a sudden, so I'm going to ask you. Um, like uh, I always ask all the guests the same question. Um, when you were little and you were listening to the radio, like at mom's house or grandma's house or someplace or wherever, and when you I first remember like the radio coming on. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, what was the first song you remember? Oh, okay, okay. Um, Donna Summer, uh, Last Dance. 
Save the Last Dance. Yeah, yeah, Last Dance. I think it's called Last Dance. Yeah. Last Dance. <laughs> it's the last chance for romance. You know that one? Yeah, sure. That's like one of those. Songs. Oh yeah. I heard that as I was a kid, and I was like, "Mommy, Daddy, what does that mean?" <laughs> I don't know, but she said when she sang tonight, I was just like, "Awesome! She is awesome!" And yeah. we'd dance around the room. Uh, my parents thought I was weird, and they were right. Okay, I think music touches us at a very early age. I think it's important that whenever um, those little things, that's where we start our growth of all the music and everything that, that happens, you know, and um, yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. I'm going to bring my friend Jeff in the room now, too. Seth, you're going to be my friend Jeff from Visalia, California. Awesome. Jeffrey Blackmon, he's, uh, we, we get, we're friends because of the Todd Snyder music and the page, and, and we started working together on this thing. And Word. Jeff's in from this awesome man shed he's got with, not by his pool. He's doing all right. Oh. Thank Hello, Hello, sir. Hey, Jeff, what's up, man? How's it going, fellas? All right, buddy. How you been, buddy? John? Life is good right now. Oh, yeah, let me turn this thing off here. Shit. Yeah, double down. I did the same thing. All right, there you <laughs> You're the one always telling me how to do the sound, Jeff. I know, I know. I fucked up. I, 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 I told myself... Uh, you know, right before you got me on here, I'm like, make sure you turn the sound off. And, and I didn't do it. So, fail. Oh, it's 420 um, for me just said. 420, folks. Happy 420. <coughs> I'll cough. I'll cough in honor of 420. Um, Jeff coming in from California. This is going to be a, um, this is a real fun show tonight. We're just doing as whoever wants to come in and however they want to come in and do it. And we're going we're gonna to celebrate 420 now and say hi to my mom. She's out there. Hey, mom, we love you. And um, see what we're doing that. We'll put on some jam here. Fat Mom Rooney, nice. Battle Mal, Fat Mom Rooney, like Michael Neighbors. Looks like the long version, nice. It's good, we need 30 seconds. Bring it down. Music sponsored by iMovie, free music that comes with your computer. <laughs> but most of the time, where it comes from, it's free. You know, you gotta use it. I, I make a lot of movies for all kinds of stuff. There's a whole soundtrack of stuff in there. You can use. <laughs> I have had the for using some of it before. Every now and then, it gets like randomly. They're like, hey, you can't use that. It belongs to you know Yako Imanez or something like that. And it's like, no, it's not Flacco's song, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's what time is it here? It's it's about time for a more another music thing here. Five records, folks, live from. Illinois via Visalia, California. Get you five records, folks. If you got them. Seth's gonna just join us for the hangout. Seth, stay as long as you like, please. You're you're part of the show now. So um. Oh, thank you. Anybody who wants to come in the show, the links below. But we won't let just everybody in. You know. <laughs> I am honored. Thank you. Um, I will try to be a pleasant and beneficial guest. I think I already showed this record. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, so we do five records every week. We show all five of our favorite records or five favorite record album covers that we like um, out of the collection of our vinyl. And we try to, uh, usually we, we invite vinyl collectors. Seth's not a vinyl collector right now. That's okay. Hey, it's all yeah. good. Records are heavier than hell. I got, the, the floor's about to cave in over here where my records are sitting. <laughs> yet. I'm not a vinyl collector yet. And that's all right. So somebody on the, somebody whose name is just iPhone coming in. Oh, nice. Got stickers, Jeffrey. Nice. Everything arrives safely, I take it. Oh, yeah. And I, I've already shipped a couple. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. My buddy Paul, his his birthday is on uh, next Monday. So I, I, I sent him some up there to Oregon. Very nice. Man. That's very cool. That's cool. I would send those out. You know, that, that that campaign paid for itself and then some. And then I ordered another sticker after that because it can't, it works so well. And then we're getting ready to do the T-shirts. The T-shirts will be next. So I can't wait for those. It'll be a blast. So five yeah. records tonight I'm going to start. Uh, my first record here is a, kind of a simple cover. The Who, Live at Leeds. Oh. Just the Live awesome. Who album, and it's just a plain vanilla manila envelope album with the, with the that stamped on there, like it's because that's probably what they stamped on the like the backstage passes or whatever, you know, on the thing. There's nothing on the back of it, and you open it up, and it's just like cheesy folder. But then inside the folder, there's all this great stuff, like photographs. I just ripped it. Awesome. Um, photograph of these guys. Look how, look how sexy the Who were back then. <laughs> <laughs> And there's, there's a piece of paper in here that says something about like how much they got paid for Woodstock, and it's like a photocopy of the the receipt for them, the fireworks company for the fireworks for the show. 
they just put some cool stuff in the end in, in the so when I, when I first got it and I found this stuff in there I was freaking out so I was like man I got the who's record they got personal paperwork in there and it's like one of a kind I think it came with all all the copies of the record because it was my uncle Dan's record I think or uncle yeah. Gene probably swiped it from one, one of my uncles but it's really good though it's live well, it's probably a special edition though dude I imagine so with all that paper and stuff inside of it you know oh yeah the vinyl itself isn't perfect but it's not bad either it, it plays through that's what's up like 90 percent, like all my records Everyone. yeah the who wow. live at leeds Woo, who are you won't get fooled again although we're gonna get fooled in a minute when i let this person whose name just says iphone they didn't set up their zoom account but it just says iphone so the next person that came in the room is just his iphone so we'll wait till our other five records so jeffrey you're up bud right. <laughs> well i got uh charlie pride here oh yeah hope you're feeling hope you're feeling me and what i just noticed it said poster included and i i never really paid attention and now i look and sure enough oh it's michael neighbors michael come in in a few minutes we'll let you know. if you have five records michael hey jeff for singly oh wow i don't want to, uh, I don't want to unfold the whole thing yeah it's been a long time i gotta have a charlie pride poster up somewhere i might frame that i used to know a dirty charlie pride joke but i can't tell it i won't yeah. ever tell it again actually <laughs> did you bring your buddy in yeah, we'll bring him in. It's Michael Neighbors. We'll see what he's got going on. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna we'll keep it we'll keep it moving here. Uh, my next record while he's coming in is this. Uh, I like this. I love this photograph of these guys on the front of it. America, Homecoming is the name of the record. Oh man, that is a great one. It's a great picture. It's just this guys just you know in their prime back in the day, no guitars even. Horse with no name. It's a great oh. album. Don't cross the river. <clears throat> and what else is on here? California revisited. So like they had like. They had two or three really big hits, you know. They had Ventura Highway, Tin Man, Horse with No Name. They had three or four really big hits that America had, and they had like seven more albums that really there's not much on that pulls your ear. They did like an electrical album. They did a country album. They did a they did all kinds of different kinds of music along the way. Um, but that really the original stuff that they wrote that they did was and oh it opens up oh crap it opens up yeah because it goes it's like a mural. Oh, I can't even show it all. It's so big. Oh that one goes up. So oh man. So that's the that's the outside, the whole desert. Scene. Oh yeah. And there's the horses in the background and stuff, and a guy on the, riding the horse like he looks on the trail of tears, unfortunately. But and then the inside of it's like this way. Oh my god. That's a great photo. See, I didn't even know that was in there either. I've had this record for a long time. <laughs> like out in the redwoods or something. I'm like, hey, yeah, bummer. We live out in the redwoods. Uh, Jeff. <laughs> you know. Bummer. I know. Oh, I could I could be in the redwoods in in about forty five minutes. See? Oh, I'm jealous as hell. Yeah, that's Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey's my friend Seth. <laughs> so he came I in the room with no video. Oh. Let's try to see if we can ask him to start his video. And then he had no audio either, so you might have to unplug your headphones or something. Anyway, I think it's my friend Michael Neighbors is trying to come in. He hasn't even come in yet. So, uh, Jeff, you're up, bud. What do you got next? Uh, this one's kind of like a just a bluegrass special. It's got three different bands. It's a There's four albums. Um, is, that, is that train winking at us? I mean, there's, there's, what there's two records. So, Mike, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. What's going on, buddy? Not much, it's got the, it's well, three different the bands. Yeah. Hey, Mike. How are you? Good. 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 What's up, Jeff? Is yeah. that a speaker? What's yeah, up? I couldn't. I couldn't barely hear when over the phone speaker, so I just put the speaker on my shoulder. Looks like a bionic attachment. The Bluegrass yeah. Special. So yeah. who, who plays on that album, Jeff? We'll, we'll, we'll get right back to you there, Mike. Uh, the Living Guitars, uh, Bluegrass Banjo Pickers, and the Country Fiddlers featuring Wade Ray. Nice. Bitchin'. There's so much bluegrass stuff that you would never heard of or ever be able to hear of. Right. Um, I love it. I love it. But it's got all the great songs on there, you know, Orange Blossom Special, Moleskine or Blues. Old Jack Clark, you know, nice Blue breakdown. Just a lot of good uh, picking on that on that album. Yeah, I like, I love it. I love it. Bluegrass special, a train, a winking train. It looks like it's winking train. It looks like it's winking to me because it's got one eye open on one side and it just looks winking. I think that's cool. Yeah. This next one's kind of a downer because I don't know about if I like the Doors anymore, but I love the inside of this album cover. I still like the Doors. Sorry, Jim and you guys. You guys are great, but uh, over the years, the Doors have been my like, my favorite band, and then my like eh. No, I didn't like him for a while. I, I always like him now, but look at that art's really cool, though. Some, some piece of art. Oh, yeah. 
And that's on the inside of the Soft Parade album, which is pretty awesome. One of their last records that they put out as The Doors. And then one of your that was one of your questions. What was the first album? My favorite first album, first song I've ever heard is The Doors. Nice. Right. Yeah, yeah. We were hearing the doors pretty early, man. The doors, and it was cool right away, you know. The doors, um, but they, they this was the last album the doors produced, and then after this, fun fact, they released another album after Jim died, and it's called The Other Guys. And it, it's like, We're the Other Guys is the name of the album, but it's by the doors. But it's but the album's called We're the Other Guys, and it's just they tried to go do their own album with Robbie and and and, and those guys and Densmore. And it just didn't work out. Didn't didn't have the peel. Didn't pull. You know. And it was unfortunately they were really the coolest part about the Doors. I mean, Jim Morrison was interesting, but the music was is awesome. It makes you feel like it, you know, it rise, Riders in the Storm, and all that. You know, but but, <clears throat> but they couldn't pull it off as a band by themselves, really, without Jim Morrison. You know. So right. anyway, we love you, Jim. Good job. Go check it out. That kind of reminds me of the other ones. It is. It's just like the other ones, but it's like we're the other guys. I'm pretty sure is the name. I'm almost yeah. for sure that's the name of the album. We're the other guys, or the other guys in the band, something like that. Dude, same way that the Dead had to go with the, the other ones. You know, we're not Jerry, but we're here. You know, hey, yeah. love the Doors, man. Yeah. This is kind of a. It's not an actual uh, album of his, but it's like greatest hits, Jimi Hendrix, Smash Hits. Oh, Smash Hits. That's the first album I had by him. Uh, yeah, I love that old school. Like how they, they would uh, cut the the opacity of of the photographs and they would like to do the layering how they produce that front image yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. then they'd cut it and see how it's like one's more yellowish one's more red looks like Definitely. but they'd add a little tint to it like that's old school and it's beautiful yeah that's a great album cover is that can you see me on it can you see me i think it's like the first track yeah, yeah it does that's a great i had that cd somewhere from when i was growing Purple up haze. Is that the first track on one? No, it's like the fourth song in on uh, side one. Purple Haze, Fire, The Wind, Christ. Basically, a greatest hits album, huh? Yeah, it's a great. Yeah, it's a smash hits kind of greatest hits album. When I got that, I didn't. I just I got it as the album, and it was like, well, it's jamming all the rocks. Mm -hmm. This is I did that. Brought this for Phil, but he's not here tonight. Where's Phil? He's in he's in Tennessee going to a Mo show. Yes. I like these real tall. I don't know why I picked out two of these tall images like this from the albums. I just like that's cool, man. Peter Frampton's like, no, man, I'm cool. Yes. Look at me, I'm Peter Frampton, baby. Do you feel like I do? Hey, hey you're from New York City. <laughs> Dude, that needs to be like on the front of your fridge. So every time you look at it, it's like you'll never feel bad looking at the refrigerator again. Why? Because Peter Frampton is there to show you why you should feel good. <laughs> do you feel like I, we do? Man, I'm going to listen to this tonight. Show me the way. Uh, that, that song about waking up after the, being drunk. Oh, that's a good song. Song about waking up after being drunk. Yeah, Phil's out on the road tonight, so he's at a Mo okay. show. He's going to be at two Mo shows tonight and tomorrow night. Where, where in Tennessee, he's at the caverns, right? The caverns, but it's not at the caverns, it's like above the caverns because they haven't opened the caverns yet. So it's in a bigger venue they've got above the caverns, kind of an amphitheater. Billy's playing there too. Billy Shrink was supposed to play there, wasn't he? Oh, I bet. But he's playing everywhere, dude. He's got 40 gigs, 40, 40 shows on that on that roster of shows he's playing. He's putting up more too, he says. Wow, uh, he'll play. If he sells all those shows out and there's any open dates between those shows, they'll just add another night to any of those places, I bet you, like they do. His tickets yeah. are selling like wild cakes, dude. There ain't no nobody right now. I mean, everybody just sold a bunch of tickets. Fish just sold a bunch of tickets. Dead and Company sold a shitload of tickets. And Billy Strings, I bet he sold more tickets than both those other bands put together. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Maybe not so much, but he's so popular right now that it just, I mean, everybody was he's talking killing. about him this week. Yeah, he's killing it for sure. I tried to get the Dead and Company tickets for Chicago and they... It kept freezing because I guess so many people were trying to like log in on it or whatever. And it kept, I was like at 10 a.m. I was on it and I kept hitting the refresh at like 9:59, and then hit it at 10 and it wouldn't let me. It froze. The page froze. Yeah, it that, wouldn't let my password or nothing. And Ticketmaster is infamous for screwing kids out of tickets, man. And it's just because so many people want them. And you know, I get it. You know, but you know, I oh, personally. Careful. I didn't log into anything for tickets to buy a ticket except for a Shoe Fest RV pass. Mm -hmm. I bought tickets for yeah. the local festival we have here in RV Pass. I didn't give me fish tickets or dead tickets or anything like that. If the shows come up, if I'm, if I'm available, I'll probably still be able to go. 
I don't know. I'm or get a sure. Like the, the past three times that I went to a dead company in, I went the past three years or four years, whatever. Besides last year, I got all my tickets out on the scalp. Are you on number four, Jeff? <laughs> what? Are you on number four? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I'm on number four. We're still doing records, like Mike. I can't get you distracted. Oh, I was like, count to five. Is really three shows or records? <laughs> yeah, count to five is really hard. Well, why don't we just talk about whatever happens and it keeps the show going, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. Okay, you're on number four, so you're you're. Uh... Yeah, I know. I'm up. Uh, okay, yeah. Here, uh, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, Riddles of the Sand. This one's probably not the most sought out record, but I remember it. Buffett, but I have it. I like that campfire thing though. It would get a horse on your album too, man. I got a horse on the horse no name. Heck yeah, Jimmy Buffett. I was all I was harmonizing on with him earlier today because I was just looking at what's on here and I'm like, okay, maybe who's the blonde stranger in Rack Top Day? Whoa. Yeah, all the other songs that don't even ring a bell and those songs aren't even like uh those aren't even on the best hits album or nothing like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're not even on the best hits album. There you go. I think a lot of the people, um, a lot of people produce albums during times when they're not popular that you just never hear about and they don't get played. So, you, I mean, those songs, if they were played for us on the radio, if yeah. they picked through and we heard them, like we hear Margaritaville, I mean, they would be just as good as this. I mean, they're, they're, some, there's probably some great tracks on that album, you know? I love well, it. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty big, I was a pretty big Buffett head for numerous years. I used, I, I've read mostly all of his books and stuff and have you got parent stuff. a lot of records. So, you know. Um, For me to not recognize some of the songs on that album is just kind of strange. You know, just makes, like, you, makes you wonder what was going on in his life when that came out. Was he like, was he fully like middle eighties? He was all coked out. It was like bad times. You know, yeah, just, yeah. you got to put another album out. Jimmy, come on, another album, another album. Like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then he does it, you know. <laughs> not without having another heart attack or an aneurysm or both. Or, or during or around a time of health or something like that, health issues or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, and since since but, Phil's not here tonight, I did my last album for tonight because Phil's not here. Is is banned on the run because he's on the run. It was ten hours away, man. Which then again, you guys give me looking inside albums because you know you want to see what's in there. This one's got a great like big photograph of them in like Bangladesh or something with a bunch of of poor hungry children. You know, right. let's put that picture That's in our album. You know, it's it's a strange album for Band on the Run. When you think about the album, the, the songs that are, that are involved, you know, of course, Band on the Run, and I think maybe Uncle Albert. What else is on here? Some good album. You know, Uncle Albert's on this one. But is that with Paul? Yeah, we're talking Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney, and like yeah, that's yeah. Paul McCartney and Linda McCartney, and then like that was like, their charity of the time. They okay, they worked never. down there and gave a bunch of money to those kids. Uh-huh. I'm sure. I'm sure. Danny Lane heard, was a trio at the time. That's pretty cool. Was was they were they always a trio? Was Wings always? No, they were more than a trio. Because it was key- keyboards and all that shit, but this is just less than three people. I don't know. There were more than a trio. They're <laughs> a freaking opera. <laughs> yeah, I guess you'd have you'd have um, you know did uh, cause Paul played bass most of the time, of course, and Linda on keyboards. And then if you did that with a drummer, that'd be kind of weird. You need more. You need guitars and all that kind of stuff and fiddles and whatnot, you know. But inside the album, of course, you'd pull the album out. Linda was a photographer. So inside the album of this one is all these photographs from the road. God. Oh, wow. Just a few. <laughs> yes. And you can't like, I mean, I don't know. I think that's pretty awesome stuff. It, that was valuable, I um, mean, you know, before the internet. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, the internet devalued everything. Once everybody could look up what it cost. To some, some I mean, I got your friends coming over to your bedroom, you know, and hang out. And yeah. He's got the coolest posters, man. Right. His friend? I want that poster. <laughs> He's you got can cool- still have the coolest posters. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to show everybody. I got John's a lot of ones. John's got some sick ones. I got a lot of posters. I, I yeah. want to tell you Jeff. I need to. I, I meant to. I'm, I'm going to get you a tube out in the mail pretty soon. Actually, with some stuff. After I get these next two festivals done, I'll have a bunch more stuff. I'm going to send you some cool. What art. do you got lined up next? Uh, uh, what do you got lined up for the for shows? Two weeks yeah. out, and the first weekend of June is the Hartford camp out. And then I go on vacation. Yeah, that's like that's it. The giant the bean blossom. It's a camp out because they canceled the festival last year. Uh, Everybody who rented an RV spot was a non-refundable RV spot, and they were only good for one year from the date that they canceled the festival. 
Okay. Somehow we talked the campground into letting us just use all those spots this weekend. Okay, so we were just going to go over there and camp. Or just a few of us, actually. A handful of us were going to go over there and camp in our sites so we didn't lose them and didn't forfeit the money, you know. And, um, and then that turned into, like, everybody going. And then it turned into, like, a full festival campground full of people that are going to be at the festival anyway who have all the 200, 300 sites or whatever they have out there. And then that turned to us into booking 12 bands and getting the health department involved. Then we started booking vendors and food. So it's pretty much a full festival, but it'll nice. be, you have to be, you have to buy camping from the campground basically. And that, then I don't know how they're going to work the walk-in camping. They never really turn people away. Is it Bean Blossom in Indiana? I think it's only like, like ends up being about 50 bucks with the, with the way they charge. It's like 12 bucks per person per night. So it's about 50 bucks for three days. That's pretty good though for 12 yeah. bands and party and festival and pick-in and probably really you got good. Some goodies. There's some goodies on there. Who's all going to play, do you know? Uh, Chicago Farmer, the Hen House Prowlers, the Tillers, Hammer okay. and the Hatchet, Flatland Harmony Experiment, just to name a few. Um, the New Old Cavalry. Yeah. Um, There's going to be a big bluegrass picking weekend. And everybody who comes will bring their instruments. We'll all have our musical instruments out there. We'll all be playing in the in the wild. I'll, I'll go live from out there as long as we have internet on that weekend. Are you coming up north this weekend at all for the concert by the creek? No, I'm not going to make it to Mackey's, but I wish I, I wish I could. That's concert by the creek up there at Mackey's Hideout. I am going to see Chicago Farmer tomorrow night for just for fun. Go see him. Where at? The, the Rose Bowl in Urbana. It's like a kick-ass little country bar that the kids bought. That, that my buddies bought. I won't call them the kids. Cody and Cody and Charlie bought it. What did you call? So I'm going to do that tomorrow night. Cody okay. put it on the bar itself. I don't think Cody, uh, Cody uh, Jensen, Cody Jensen, the drummer um, from oh. um, that plays with Cody now. He's the other Cody. Him okay. and live in Champagne, so they, they bought the they bought the bar off the old owners. I mean, I saw Ray Wiley Hubbard in there. That was the kind of place you go see James McMurtry or just like a old country bar. Yeah. Kind of a, I mean, like you see the old country bar that in the in the movies when they walk in, they go, "Oh shit!" You know, it's a cowboy bar. That's kind of the bar it was. Um, right. so, so you got one more record, right? Yeah, yeah. we play both kinds of music here, <laughs> country and western. Here we go. We'll Last get back into half of that in a minute. Oh, yeah. One of the best albums of all time. Red-headed yeah. stranger. It's in about three right. chords, that whole record. It's so good. I love the back of this because you can just, like, you get to read a comic book. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have seen that before. They made I a think, movie. I'm pretty sure my grandma had that when we... We went, uh, I used to go camping with my grandparents in their uh, big, you know, fifth wheel camper. And they had uh, a collect, small collection of records and a record player. That was one of their records. I used to listen to that on repeat as a child. Have that oh, going awesome. while playing with like toys and cars and crazy stuff. Oh, good times. Good times. Now that doesn't even exist. Oh my gosh. Every song on here is just like. Oh, it's so good. It's one after the other, and every and the ones you don't under, you don't want you don't you don't recognize just fit right in with the rest of them. It's a rock opera. It's like it's like that's like a what the rock opera albums like Pink Floyd, The Wall. You know, Redhead Stranger is its own story. It's it's great. Oh my. Hey, he should have messed with his old lady's horse, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Straight up. He should not have messed with those old lady's horse. And that's my records, folks. We made it. <laughs> my records, John and Phil, today with Jeff and Seth and, and Michael. All over the dang nation. Um, we are back. All right, bud. Yeah, Seth, thanks for coming on the show, bud. Yeah, you're in for the night. Better learn some jokes before it's over with. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just the next step. Hey, he left just like Phil does. Just, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Phil's gone. Phil just logged off. He's going to the happy town. He's in Mo tonight. I wish I was there. I'm just trying fun. to figure out who's the Phil stand in. I think it's Seth. Seth is kind of Phil stand in. He doesn't know it, but yeah, he is definitely the Phil stand in. <laughs> He's in for the long haul. Why am I getting a, a, I just got a notification for something that it said it happened about a minute ago, but it happened like, oh no, it was the second person that said the same thing. Never mind. Because the conversation that? shifts over to Lollapalooza now. Uh, you've heard Where? of Lollapalooza, Jeff. It's a thing that happens in Chicago now. It used to be a tour. Yeah. But they're now doing a COVID test at the door for that. They're doing a COVID test at the door for that one? At the door, yeah. I ain't going to that. All right, that's a trip, man. I got the shot, but either way, that's kind of messed up. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. That's the future. Yeah. Hey, that's what, that's, he wants the same thing. Dead & Company wants you to do – they want you to have your vaccination for the Dead & Company tour. 
Uh, it gives you more confidence. It makes you feel a little bit better. I mean, each person to their own, how they're going to deal with it. Um, yeah. you know? But I'm not going to, I wouldn't go out of my way. If I was uncomfortable with it, I wouldn't go do it to go see Journey. Well, yeah, to be forced, like almost like you're forced, you know, because like, I want to see good music. I got to do this, you know, no, they, not they, saying they, it's not a good thing to do. The headliners for, for Lollapalooza are Foo Fighters, um, Tyler, the creator, Miley Cyrus, Journey, <laughs> Miley. Yeah, oh, Miley Journey. Cyrus, Journey is one of the oh, big headliners. Okay. And there was a couple other. I, I didn't recognize any of them except for Foo Fighters, which one? They're great, you know, of course. But they turned it into like more like a rap pop thing, though. That's the thing I don't like about it. It used to be like a punk rock, like rock and roll show, and now it's like pop and rap, and they changed it. When it started off, it was it had it would had hip hop music in there too, and there was hardcore, and there was there was industrial, and there was dance music, and there was there was Tool, and there was I mean, but yeah. it, was, it was music that couldn't get played on the radio. Now it's whatever's getting played on the radio. And then, and then right. you know, underneath the 10 headliners, which I kind of recognize, there are probably not another 90 bands that I've never heard from. Yeah. Never heard from. I'm too old. You know, these bands. Are awesome awesome. Man. <laughs> you know, you get those headliners to bring the crowds and stuff, you know? Yeah. True. And then, true. Probably be a lot of good bands in those bands we don't recognize. Yeah. Well, I mean, that that's the thing I loved about going to festivals was that I would go to a festival. Fun. But I would always discover a new band. Yeah, you know? I agree. I love that part of it. Yep. And you might not even like the band you went for. You know, you might be disappointed by the band you went there to oh, see. Sure. Find someone else is so much better. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how I found Chicago Farmer was walking around at a festival at summer camp. They've got oh, a that's really. awesome. That's what I'm saying. Summer camp. That's how some cool bands do there. <laughs> they got Ween. They got, um, I don't think they got Fish. They got Ween. They got um, Freeze, I think, Mo. Early Strings. They got really? big, big names on summer camp, which is awesome for summer camp. But it's just, I'm too old for that one too. It, it wears me down. So if you know if you're young, you want to have fun, go to summer camp. You know, yeah. Well, you can. If you've never been, I would say go. Yeah, but then there's so many other good festivals that are happening. I mean, that's just the beginning of the summer with um with the Hartford thing, and then a couple weeks after that, I have a party, and a couple weeks after that, there's one in Southern Illinois, and then they, uh, they'll just kind of start popping up like crazy. Mox which is beautiful. Moxon Creek is, is a Father's Day weekend. That's in Effingham, Illinois. That's a bunch of really good bands this year, and so this is gonna be. What's the name of it? Moccasin Creek. It's a little more country, but it's a but it's it's kind of on the Chicago farmer and then then past him spectrum. Um, but it's a really fun, you know? I don't know. Yeah, it's a really fun time. Jeff Singley joined the joined the what's up Circus Peanuts. He's out there watching. Yeah, kind of quiet out there tonight, but that's okay. Oh, Autumn, I supposed to send the link. Hold on, I got another buddy coming in, but I can send the code here. Hey, we can tell Phil he's got a he's got a pretty pretty big draw because you know now there's only three of us watching right now. Yeah, and two of them are in the room probably. Don't even tell me. <laughs> you can't count those numbers, man, because that's not what it's about. This is about what. Happens oh, I know. I'm just joking. <laughs> we can. Phil, Phil always needs his head like blown up a little bit bigger, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I felt so bad last week when he, I couldn't get him on the show, and he wouldn't. We, he couldn't figure out the, how to get to the link. And I was trying to open a Facebook live and then bring him in, but he couldn't. It just wasn't working, and then my internet was shit, and so it didn't happen last week. We did fifty four on Monday last week, so you saw you saw Black One. We did the show on Monday, yeah. where we, we were like, "Well, fuck it, it's it's it's, it's Friday." Let's just we were talking on the things. So we like, you know, we just do our show now. Why does it? There's no rule that says we have to do it on Friday afternoon. Oh, well, you know, a few yeah, people. Time travelers. Yeah, and it, you know, sometimes Monday needs to become a Friday. There, it, it's there, it's, it's such a simple, easy thing that can happen where Monday just becomes a Friday, and then you just, I mean, right now, who really, I mean, the Fridays depend on where you work, I guess, you know, and if you work someplace where you get off on Tuesday, well, maybe that's your Friday, you know. Oh, yeah. Maybe. That's why they should still serve breakfast all day at McDonald's. I'm, I'm going to protest that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 crap they're selling. All of this is singular, singular reasoning. <laughs> That's water out there outside uh, Michael's place, man. Where are you at, Michael? Northern uh, Northern. We got a little lake in the backyard here. Oh, okay. It's in, I'm in up like north, northwest suburbs, Chicago, northwest suburbs. Awesome. You live in the suburbs of Chicago? Yeah, the northwest. I used to live down in Piatone, down by down the farm. 
Do you know Frank Gallagher? I do. Do you personally? <laughs> yeah. You want I got a whiskey tree right outside my door. Look at that tree. Yeah. I got a window. I can see a tree. <laughs> nice. I got some flowers. See, there's Jeff. And show us the pool. This makes us totally jealous. Show us the pool. 45 minutes from the trees. On the hammock uh, over there in the end. I can go in the hammock. I should okay. go in the hammock. Hey, you produce your show from where you're at. You got you know, that's up to you. My friend Autumn's gonna come in the room here in a second. He's a, a clown artist. He's not a clown artist. He's a balloon clown artist. Amazing friend. Hey Autumn, get your you're gonna be connected here in a second. Well, I can I can pop off uh, here. off here so you guys can keep the the five screens going. Oh, that, here yeah. I'm I'm actually gonna pop off. Uh, All right, yeah. So, stopping by, bud. But I'll stop continue watching. But uh, yeah, good to see you. Thanks for right out there. Thank we'll see you, you see you tomorrow. Thanks, okay. Seth. Yeah. The, the, the zoom, the zoom. There he is. He, he's getting his audio figured out. Now, what Autumn does is, I met Autumn at a festival and he makes balloon critters, man. And he puts them together with balloons and makes, you know, just like a balloon dog. Put or, him on the big screen, man. Yeah. He's getting his, his audio is slowly. You got headphones plugged in there, Autumn, or something like that, maybe, I wonder? Now I can hear you guys. Right, there he is. There he is. What's up, buddy? How you been? Hey. Man. I'm doing great, Sean. Good to see you. You too, bud. You too, man. Definitely. What's going thanks on there? For, uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for uh, letting me hop in today. Well, I just, I, you're the first person I thought of. Uh, Phil's having some, he's technical difficulties up in the mountains today. So, uh, you right away is like, I hadn't seen, I haven't talked to you in like months. And like, we did the show a few times. And then mm -hmm. when I was going back through all the shows, I was like, man, Autumn's show was a long time ago. That means I haven't talked to him in a while, man. So I'd, I'd check in with you too, you know, see what's going on. This is my friend Michael down here in the one corner, and that's Jeff over there in the other corner. And everybody can stay as long hey, as they guys. want. Leave whenever you feel it's all good. Uh, no pressure, no, you know, if you got jokes, stick around, you know, because we need jokes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did hear, well, also, I did a joke. Also, I did, uh, I did manage to uh, whip up some quick balloons to share with, with all you guys. All right. Because uh, I, uh, I couldn't resist. I was born, what can I say? So I got this this neat little turtle dude. Nice. nice. Terrapin. Oh, and uh, I was kind of hungry. That's why I was late to getting on the show. So I grilled up some hot dogs just before I hopped <laughs> on. Oh, that's sick, dude. Great. All right. No way. That's dope. <laughs> that's super cool. Well, so yeah, just in case you, you guys have... Yeah, ha haven't uh, heard of me or met me. Uh, that's what I do uh, for a living. I've been doing it for uh, 15 years now since I was nine. And uh, yeah. But anyways, I like your hair, man. Very speed racing. I won't say any more. <laughs> Hell yeah! Like, I don't want to take. I don't want to take this spotlight the whole time. Oh, I had spotlight. Giant spotlight. It's just the four of us now. It should be just the four of us now. I would mess around with that. Just have to put you on the spotlight for a show. Those really awesome things. I like the turtle because people can wear that away from when you're wherever you're at doing it. Kids would dig that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I try to make a lot of my stuff wearable, especially out, out at outdoor uh, festivals and stuff like that, because uh, the kids uh, are really bad at holding on to the balloons. Oh yeah. And uh, they, they, it's it's like minutes or seconds sometimes before something pops on them. Yeah, yeah. What is the detail that you do on them? What's how do you do the detail on them? Like the detail, like on the hot well, dog. I, how do you do I go, and I like, go in with a sharpie marker and I draw some of it on. Uh, the uh, the googly eyes are actually balloons, believe it or not. That's I, awesome. uh, I, I I try to take a little extra time and make it. It's a lot simpler than it looks. I just try to put as much detail while. Keeping it simple as I can. The eyeballs, the same balloon as the bracelet part of it? Uh, no, no, actually, I uh, this, this uh, bracelet I had to attach on another balloon uh, because it, uh, the scrap I had left this time uh, wasn't big enough. It would have, like, cut the circulation off my wrist. Well, if if you ever if you need what about the hot dog? What about the hot dog? What's the detail on the hot dog? Like, how'd you do the mustard? Let me see the let me see the hot dog again. Oh yeah, so I I got a little funny uh, bit to add here. Uh, before I hopped on, my grandpa was teasing me, and he requested poppy seeds, so I I speckled <laughs> those on for him because uh, we like a good poppy seed bun. 
and then I got the little grill marks there, and just the the mustard is just a, a inflated balloon with a little puff of air in it, just yeah. wrapped okay. around. That's yeah. It. No ketchup. Baby, no, no ketchup. Yeah, I was wondering. I was like, there's something about Chicago. Is it no mustard or no ketchup? No ketchup. No ketchup. Hot dogs. No ketchup. They, won't, they won't even get the ketchup. They'll kick your ass out at one place under the bridge. They won't let you go. Gene and Jews, I think. One of them won't even let you in if you ask for ketchup. Well, if you say something about ketchup, yeah. I don't know if they'll get something for your fries, though. I don't know how that works, man. <laughs> they say use mustard. They say use mustard, yeah. They say you the great Chicago catch 1946 or something. <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, she, uh, Phil is down in Tennessee. He's going to be checking in hopefully in a little bit. They're trying to drive to the venue right now, and they're probably waiting in their car in line. Which would be perfect oh, awesome. For Join back yeah. in. We're going to be scattered in the next few months. You know, it's going to be hard for us to do that when we actually go places during the summertime. It's going to be hard for us not to or to both be home on a Friday night because pretty soon it's going to be gigs and shows and, and and things like that you know um, which is exciting yeah. on tour yeah mm -hmm. I, I sure enjoy the shows though you know um but it's totally understandable you know how do you feel about going to shows jeff ah uh, i've done it i did a show uh on the first i did a, a music festival uh it was me and uh my buddy owns a music shop in Hanford, um, where Steve Perry actually is from. Um, but my buddy owns a music shop there, and, and during COVID, you know, he had to keep paying his rent and stuff. It's a small independent music shop. And so we did a music festival last year uh, for COVID to help him pay his rent. And then a year later, we did a music festival in person. And it turned out pretty good. But it was more, I mean, there was, there was some uh, folks there watching us, but then... It was a lot of the bands watching the bands type of festival. Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, but it it was a good, uh, good show, and we got a lot of, um, the the guy there that uh has the property and stuff. He has a really good camera that like has this like motion thing where he can just walk around, and so he he did a couple good videos for each band and stuff, and then posted that, and so that was cool. Does it twist? What? Does the camera swivel like one of those swivel ones? Yeah, it has this like it sits on this arm and it just swivels and stuff and yeah, kind of you get, like actual like like cool footage like moving footage almost. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Like like what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm, like moving footage. Yeah, he's just sitting there with his phone in his hand. That's the that's the that's the that's what you do. That's like my tripod for my painting live is usually just a coffee mug and rubber band. Yeah, but we raised we raised enough cash to help the guy pay his rent for a couple more uh, months and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I want I want to I, I went to that show. I saw Sam Bush last weekend. Two nights of Sam Bush at this this festival. Uh, it was really good to see music, and it was just there were good shows to start with. And I had done a couple little things, but I hadn't done like a. The wife hadn't gone out with me yet at all. She hadn't been anywhere since like October, from other than the grocery store and work. Right. And so she went with us and. It was awesome. You know. Been sober, John? You quit drinking? Me? Yeah. I drink sometimes. I'm not oh, drinking I you... because I don't have any in the house, and I forgot to get some, and so I have to wait till Andy comes home. But she went to go see her mom, so like it's a whole. It's all right. I got I got a glass of water and I got a gummy right here. I'm getting ready to eat. I think maybe just eat this. That gummy. reminds so... me. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you guys for just one second. I grab myself a cold drink. All right, but all right, see you in a minute, Autumn. Yeah, they're getting Autumn, the amazing balloon man. I like the screen in the back. Oh, look at Flower? the Autumn. Flower? Dude, he doesn't mess around. He he makes, and he, his, like, he's not the kind of guy that can make a sword and a hat, you know, a dog. <laughs> he's making rainbows and just caterpillars and just the coolest shit you've ever seen in your life. And if he makes you a sword or a hat, it's going to be an incredible balloon creation. Details. Um, Definitely. Yeah, he, and, and that's how we met. He was doing balloons by our stand. And me and Phil were set up actually together in a place called Frankfurt, and that's where Autumn is from or near. Um, I don't know where that. He kind of behind us, and he blew our minds. He had a line of kids, fifty kids long, wanting some balloons. Oh, wait. Talking about at you. The, talking good about at you. The, at, the, at the Frankfurt Bluegrass Fest. At Frankfurt. Heck yeah. Yep, that's where, that's where I remember you from. I thought you looked familiar. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Uh, uh, they, <clears throat> so, so uh, the the year the year pre COVID, uh, they were being uh, a little sour with me for the first time. Uh, mind you, I I was I, I had been out all eight years prior, ever since it started, uh, and uh, they didn't give me any problems. But I don't know. But we still worked that out. Uh, I was able to stay, and uh, they moved me over across the street to where the kids' tent stuff was, and it was all right. Yeah, you you, you didn't know. You did great. That was always good to have you there. Um, please that was two or three years ago. Yeah, we'll be, we're going back. Just that I noticed. But just, I didn't notice, but it had gotten very dark, and I was really, really out of my mind. Just then a policeman stepped up to me and asked me, said, ask us, said, please, hey, would we care to all get oh, along? Uh, a little, a little bit of history. That, that was the, uh, that was the chief of police. Uh, that was the gentleman that uh, came up and approached me. The chief of police for Frankfurt is actually, um, used to be my little league football coach as a kid. Um, so it, it, it was just, uh, it was just a baffling uh, thing to happen that that day, but where'd you go to I, school? Uh, uh, Lincoln Way East. Okay, I lived out there for a little while. How old are you? I'm 25. Okay, so you're a little younger than me, but I lived out yeah. there for a little, like it out there. Awesome. Kind of the young pup, yeah. one of the young pups in our circle at 25. That's a great thing to think. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. My age, man. <sighs> I like what you do, man. He asked us to stay for tea. Yeah, have some fun. Yeah, man. Yeah. I was listening to Led Zeppelin today. I was thinking about, I think about a couple songs today because I, there was one song, it's called um, Old Number Seven by um, The Devil Makes Three. Have you heard that song, Jeff? Old Number yeah, I, I, actually, I cover it in, my, in, in two of my know, When he says the line in the song that he found out that his clothes came secondhand from yeah. the rich kids next door, how, how like, bad can you really have it if there are rich kids right next door, man? <laughs> oh no! I, trust me, I've lived, I've lived a house poor, living next door to the rich kids in the rich kid neighborhood, and going to the rich kid school. He said that line. That just made me think about that, though. If he's in a rich, it, yeah, yeah, I get it. I do get it. I do get it. But again, it's from the second hand from the rich kid next door. I love lyrics. I listen to lyrics a lot, and I really get obsessed with lyrics. Oh yeah, no, yeah that's uh, second hand, though. You know. Why they wrote them and what what, the, what it means to them is always different than what we get out of it. It seems like you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally relate to that lyric because I I was the youngest of three brothers, so everything I got was from my brothers. You know, I was like, What's wrong with that? I didn't get new clothes. I just got got their old clothes when they grew out of them. You know, and then when I grew up older, I. In high school, I thought that was cool. I would just walk into my brother's room, just take a t-shirt and walk away. Well, if he was wearing them, you already know they were cool, Jeff. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. My brother was a skateboarder. He was like a semi-pro skateboarder. So he'd get all his clothes uh, free and they'd be all these like uh, independent skate shirts and stuff, you know, yeah. like different independent skateboard companies, consolidated. Or even if you're a semi-pro, even if you skated for a skate shop, you'd get hooked up. I remember, yeah, a local skate shop here in town. They they sponsored a couple of kids, and they were getting free decks. Man, my I had to beg my parents for a new deck, or even a, even a, my first deck. You know, I had to beg for that. Oh, got a cold drink there, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah there's even a little palm tree growing out of it. I don't know how that happens, but you know, <laughs> that's sick, dude. That's, that's badass. Sick, bro. That's that's a Friday drink. <laughs> Of the detail, bro. will come to your event and he will make balloons. He will be in either his because his character motif or who he is. He will come any way you want him to be there and he will make balloons and make your people at your event so happy. It's almost, I mean, it's just it's one of the most yes, amazing. magic autumn, magic autumn. If you if if you want or autumn is cool too. You need but to get, uh, yeah, we're going up to Blue Ox Festival in, in August and it's me and Phil. And the other guy, Joyful Bubbles. You know who Joyful Bubbles is? He does. Uh, he has whole set up his bubbles. He just. Oh blows. yeah. He just basically yeah, has yeah. the most amazing he's bubbles. <laughs> um, yeah, he's at you guys. He's got one bubble wand that makes oh, like yeah. million bubbles at a time. It's little tiny bubbles, and the kids run out there and play, and they all have bubble wands. I mean, it's just a huge, a huge. 
We're doing blue oh, ox now and shoe fest. Wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has been in Sugar Creek too, and he's been a bunch of stuff. But it's funny that I, I I attract myself to these people that have bubbles and balloons and like, and and all Phil's records are round. Everything's round, really, when it comes down to it. You know, all around the world, it's all round. Like art. Uh, oh, and yeah. your paintings, John. Yeah, they go round and round in people's heads. I had a great weekend last week. I sold some paintings last weekend at a festival to people who I, and I always sell paintings to people who I just wouldn't expect to see. You know, they walk up to the table and like, or to the booth and they, and it's like they walk in. And I'm just thinking this guy, he's, he's going to laugh at me or he's going to make fun of me. And he ends up, he ends up buying like three awesome big paintings. Yeah, I don't, you can't judge a person when you meet them who they are. Or, or, who, you know, well, what, they are. what I love about your stuff is that uh, it's it's just so eclectic and, and, and unique. It, it speaks to all kinds of different people. I mean, I, I ha I've i hung around in the tent with you long enough to experience that myself. So, oh, man, we love your stuff. I tell everybody about your art, John. Well, I appreciate that, man. That's how I mm -hmm. Love it. People ask me if I advertise the stuff, or I'm like, no, I just make it. And then if people like it, then more people come up and they like it, you know? Yeah. Trying to uh, I'm trying to push your stuff around here in the Central Valley. I know. appreciate that. My brother's up in Grass Valley. I think I told you that. Yeah, yeah. He made that nice guitar. Yeah, he did. He's, he makes some good stuff, man. He's a he's good dude. Uh, did he make your guitar, John? Yeah, that little guy back there in the corner, that, that crazy that weird like, one that I play sometimes. Is that like one of wood or something? Is it like burned down there? Uh, like a stain. Is, he gets a kit, like a guitar kit, and puts it together, but it's like a stain. It's, um, it looks it's like a kind of situation. It's kind of fun. I dig it. He, um, I don't know. I'm lucky to have that, that dude. He's a he, good, good old dude. Have I met your brother, John? I don't think so. He lives out in California, and he... um. Yeah, I don't think you met him yet. No, I'm trying. I'm queuing something up right now. No, don't mind me. I'm not ignoring it. I'm just I'm spaced out because too many screens open on my screen. It's like a it's it's kind of interesting to do the show because I got all this stuff going on that I want to share with people and show people and like it's it ends up being this kind of mess of um. Here, you're, like you're, you're you're the one. You're like the the sound man producer type guy. You know. I do it all. Whoa. Yeah, you're doing it all. You're running the business. All right, here's my sound effects. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to queue up for a minute. I was gonna have to take a musical interlude break here in a second. We're gonna have our friend up here for time for us. But I thought uh, I want to thank everybody so far for being on the show with us, and, and good to see everybody so far. Jeff, always good to see you on the show, bud. You don't have to go anywhere. I'm just gonna take a quick break and put some music on for a second and see what happens. You use a break too. <laughs> we're gonna do. We're gonna dance a minute, and then we'll come back and we'll tell everybody learn a joke. And um and we'll we'll tell jokes when we come back. Okay, jokes. Jokes. Uh, jokes, the yokes, I there we go. We're just gonna let Matt play. Jokes for folks. It's my good friend. Althea Grace, she was on American Idol. And she's really good like the fourth round this year. So we're gonna let her play a song for us. Oh Louis Grace. Oh uh, yeah. I wanted to go back and catch this one too. This is just when she was on the show. I am an old woman named after my mother. Old man is another child is gone. James with thunder, the lion was desired. So thou swore to come down long time ago. Make me an angel that fights from Montgomery. Make me a priest of an old rodeo. Just give me one thing more. Leaving this living just a heartbeat ago. I was a young girl. I, I had me a cowboy. Wasn't much to look at, just free rambling. And there I was a long time. No 
Yeah, so that was our good friend Althea Grace. It's funny you were that you were in the room that night, Autumn. Yeah, and gets Phil back in the room. I mean, gets Phil on the show. I saw Phil on the show. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Get Phil. Phil's well, here. I miss the guy. Yeah. I wish he was here. Um, something else. Whenever he's not around, it's weird. I get, I get like, I get shy. Yeah. He's doing the show and he disappears for a minute. I, I fall apart. Dude, so, uh, I mean, he's hilarious on the show. Oh, he you guys both us. are. We have such a good time. He's one of my best friends for sure. It's an easy, easy, easy pick. And um, I think he quit three times on one show. It was just hilarious. I miss him already. I wish he was here. He, he, he's definitely the reason I want to do this show because we just, we're just best friends. And, and when you, you <coughs> stand for a while and you get a chance to see him and you want to. And he he still thinks it's, I, I mean he, he looks at it like we're doing this TV show and he gets all this he and people come up to him and they say they seen him on a TV show and he kind of free, cheeses him out pretty good, and, and I think that's that's cool you know I, I, that's what I want for people I want people to have that good feeling you know that cheese feeling of it's of, of either being loved or just doing something good for the world and that's why we're doing it we're just trying to that's make what sure it's all about you know keeping in touch and and now that everything's going to change and we're all going to be going back to regular life I'll, I'll still stream live and i'll try and do the show from cool places when i'm at cool places and mm -hmm. do some kind of dabs or something over there with no sound that's some funny shit to watch go by anyway it's a little annoying do what you gotta do you know well <laughs> no it's almost the COVID, uh, I, I, a little time my, work, my, my work sent me home right for covid yeah when today i've been working in my backyard on my patio i took my camping table out that i would normally take to festivals or whatever and I set it up on the backyard, you know, and I hooked it up and, and then, but, you know, discovering your show at two o'clock on Friday, was like something cool to look forward to, you know, it's like, oh, two o'clock, I put the headphones, I can yeah. watch the show, you know, because for me, I'm like, you guys are two hours ahead of me. So you start at four, I still got two hours of work going on. Oh, shh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're watching necessarily unless they're one of the three people that are they're staying tuned in, one of us. But um, that's yeah. the idea that, um, I don't know, it's just fun. <laughs> you've, been, you've been a part of it for a long time, Jeff. I appreciate that. You've been records with us three or four times now and played songs for us and the whole the whole gamut of, the, of what we do here, you know. And that's all we want to do is we just want to have a good time and, and can carry on. And I'm really jealous of Phil now. I'm starting to get angry at him because I wasn't going to be at the yeah. moment. Who does Jeff play with? Does Jeff, you play with a band? Yeah. Oh, 
Hey, that's a perfect segue, man. I could uh, plug the thing. So tonight, on I, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and hit it here. Tonight, my band, so a month ago, we recorded a video for um, our friend's band. We recorded a video at my buddy's house, a 30-minute video, and it's being premiered tonight in my buddy's, uh, as part of our other friends up in Vegas, they're doing a CD release party tonight. They're called Crimson Riot. Hmm. And they're a really cool punk band. And uh I've already that. That's in my alley, man. Yeah. yeah. So they're they're playing tonight at eight o'clock your time on Twitch. <laughs> and I'll I'll go ahead and, and and post it right here. Let's see if I can get that in here. But anyway, we're, like, we're opening up the festival. It's like a mini festival. They they got us. And then they got two other punk bands, and then them, you know. Nice. And, but they're, yeah. they're a really good band, man. They played on Tuesday night. They played from 5 o'clock till 11 p.m. No breaks. Punk band? Uh, well, yeah, they're a punk band, but they also have a, because they're, they're in Vegas, they have an alternate cover band. So they, they play do, all over, though, don't they? Yeah, Crimson, right? Yeah, they play all they over. They play all over. Yeah. They won one of those uh, Battle of the Band contest shows. Nice. Oh, nice. Very yeah. cool. But the drummer uh, played soccer with my older brother. Um, he's The drummer's from Visalia, and then he moved to Vegas with his daughter, who's Roxy, the, the lead singer. So it's like, it's a family that's the Partridge Pant family of punk. Oh, I love that. Wow. It's, the his father as the drummer, and then his daughter is the lead singer, guitar player, and then her husband is the bass player. A lot of the best upcoming bands. I'm, I watch a lot of bands come up with their parents, like, supporting them all the way, and, like, some, yeah. some parents take on the management. It's not like a Britney Spears situation, but it's like they're just trying to get these kids gigs and get them to play places, you know, and, and um, yeah, I like a good punk band. I, that's my my roots are all in punk rock. Right behind me, the record tonight is a No More Cocoons, a Jello Biafra album. For some reason, it came out of the our, our, the clock. I like all kinds of music, but your band's not a punk band, right, Jeff? No, no, we're an Irish band, traditional Irish band. Um, but, but that kind of goes the, song, the punk band does a song on their album called Saint James Gate, which is about uh, where Guinness is is made in in Dublin, <laughs> and so they hit. They hit the um, my banjo player, who played in the band with the drummer, hit him up to uh, so our banjo player, our piper, and our concertina player uh, play tracks on one of their songs on their album. That's awesome. So yeah, so we got to record tracks, send them to them, and then they include that on their out on one of the songs on the album. So they invited us to be part of their CD release party. Where we're gonna what, what was the name of your band again? It was the the you told me before, but say it again. The high grade pats. High grade pats, yeah. 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 And I think that there's like a there's a punk rock connection with Irish music too. The the the, the um The Pogues. The Pogues, oh yeah, sure. The Pogues, yeah. yeah it's definitely the Pogues. And then like just and bringing into the music like um I'm thinking of that dropkick Murphys and yeah, definitely. Yeah, that that's kind of style of music where you've got like a mix of a mixture of those different kinds of music in with that in, in with that music. You know, it's, it's cool. I I listen to Murphy's Law and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. And there's when you anytime you get a horn, I don't know. Well, not a horn section, but like um, there's just they, they tend to use that style. Oh, my daughter's home. Oh, she delivers <laughs> for Pizza Hut. She done delivered. She'll be up to say hi in a minute probably. Got the window open, but it's too hot here. It's like 84 here already. I don't got no balloon pizza. Darn. Pizza? No, that's all right. I bet you can make one. <laughs> kind of chewy anyway. <laughs> kind of chewy. Hard to make all the little pepperonis. And we're having pizza tonight. We're having homemade pizzas on some pre-made crust. Ooh. That's going to be pretty good, I think. I don't usually cook anything till after the show, but tonight I got it all ready. It's in the fridge. All I got to do is make her pizza and throw it in the oven. I just made a phenomenal Euro pizza. <laughs> The Euro pizza, basically like a gyro on a pizza. Pie, you know what I'm saying? That sounds wild. <laughs> dog. I'm an all. You guys don't know if you've met Scooby yet, but Scooby's really excited because Emily just got home. This is Scooby. Scooby. The one and only Scooby. I love Scooby. 
Will the real Scooby Doo please stand up? <laughs> All right, go get your sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Like a rat. <laughs> Brand new. He just got just got him in the last couple months, a month and a half ago. Adorable, by the way. Keeping me real busy. Keep me real busy, like a like a little like a little kid, like a kid. Oh, monkey <laughs> monster. <laughs> oh, she's my friend. Like, no, it's okay. Just you have to put two dollars. So I just got a, a friend request from Rafi. R A F I. It's a girl, and I, I'll just describe the picture. We don't have any mutual friends. Oh, uh, one picture she's in a liquor store with her butt in the air with some really tight shorts on, and the other picture is some um, large breasts inside of a tiny bikini. Do you think I should add her as a friend? That's because I'm in here. Who's that winner? Why do these things happen? And when when and when they when they happen, it's always an odd time. But yeah, Rafi, Rafi. She seems real sweet, but no other pictures. Oh, she just joined Facebook an hour ago, two hours ago, too. That's trustworthy, right? She has 2,105 friends. So what that says. She probably has the biggest dong you've ever seen, guys. Oh, my goodness. Listen to that. She joined Facebook two hours ago. She has 2,100 oh, friends. Definitely. Good track, Red. hundred people have already fallen for the scam by hitting that button. And then that's like my Aunt Barbara. It's all these people who I love who keep getting hacked. They keep getting their Facebook accounts hacked because these are not real accounts, folks. This girl does not want to talk to you. Oh, she's sending me a message. No, no, she's not. That's been messed up. <laughs> I'm watching your show right now. I added you as a friend, you silly. No, she didn't. But it's very strange. I think I just sold a painting. Okay. All right, I can do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, done. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna work on the show. I can, oh, I can, yeah. I can claim this whole thing as a work that as a work meeting. <laughs> official, official, yeah. Paint work different. meeting. Well, yeah. then, what what's in the can I'm drinking doesn't make sense. It says permanent vacation. Which reminds me, I've got stuff to open that came in the mail this week. Mail call. Oh, do it. Uh, uh, uh. Oh what yeah. Mail. 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 Oh. One from Richie Darling and one all the way from Canada, Ontario, nice. Canada, where they have letters in their zip codes. It's like L, L something or other, it says there, I think. Um, yeah, you got it all the way from Canada. I'm going to open that one second because I think I know what that one is, but I haven't seen it yet. So this one, first one's from Richie Darling wow. in St. Louis, Missouri. It says on here, postage due, $2.60. You can't really see. And then it looks like they scratched it out. I can't tell if they scratched it out or the, the mailman paid it for me maybe or something because they never came back for the $2.60. So I don't know what that means. I don't know how that works. When you mail something, but they still ship it, but they tell you, you still owe $3 on this, which would be silly because it's obviously like a CD. Hey, get out of your tax return, How much do you put on there? Is it what? <laughs> and, and, oh, yeah, he's got like four regular stamps on there. It's not much bigger than a letter, honestly, like, a, like three eighths of an inch. It's definitely a CD, like a jewel case. Jeez, man! What the the thing about getting me stuff and, and getting me presents is that you—it's—I um, can guess anything. I can, if I touch the present, if I even see the present, my mom and dad and my mom had the hardest time. My wife still has to like wrap stuff. They got me a video game one time and they put it inside of a towel. It's the only way they tricked me. And then at the next year, I knew it was a video game in a towel, so it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have to. So I know it's a CD. I guess that's my perception. Oh, he made it. It's a cool homemade envelope. John, oh, thanks for inviting me to do your podcast, The Phil and John Joe. Here's a copy of each of my last two albums in CD format. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Guy. <laughs> Diamond Cut Blues Band, which is a band he plays with out of St. Louis. A bunch of old-timer blues guys from St. Louis and Richie Darling. It's a great band. Diamond oh, Cut Blues Band. I love the blues. Love Richie the Darling. Blues. And this one's just an awesome Richie Darling album. The album cover is just like a Victorian style dress with a chicken head on it. I mean, that's just cool. That is so cool. So and he sent me a nice note. So Richie Darling, thanks you for coming on the Phil and John show. And you get a free sticker. I'll mail it to you. If you mail me something to open up on the show, I'll open it up live on the show. Um, and then I'll send you some stickers or something. Mm. I'll, 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 I'll mail you a balloon, John. I don't know if it'll be inflated still, but Good. I could bubble wrap it. See what? See how? That'd be fine. But it's, it doesn't weigh hardly anything. Put helium. You should, in you should definitely do that. Bubble wrap it. So I've never, I've never, never tried to um, sure so do that. It's customs form. You know, it says T-shirt on the customs form. And I only have one friend in Canada, right? Well, I've got two friends in Canada. One friend that came on the show, so I'm pretty sure this is for Mike Lynch. 
He's a musician yeah. out of a uh, musician out of Ontario. I mean, I met on the internet because Facebook was. Feeding oh yeah, I've seen that segment. I seen that segment. Feed, feed, Facebook was feeding me live videos based on the live video I watched. So it turned into um, me seeing something by accident because um, because it was on their next. Oh yeah. Oh, this is gonna be cool. I've seen, I've seen that segment. Uh, uh, on Friday nights, we're used to. So it's a cowboy show. Mike Lynch live in the bathtub. COVID twenty twenty shirt. No. Obnoxiously red and white. I like the red. I do like the red. red and white. <laughs> but and for the right reasons. I'm Very obnoxious. Um, and he, it was it was accident. He was just playing live on on Facebook Live, and it happened to be the next video that came up. And then I, we were friends, and now he's been on the show a couple times. And I love his music, and so Facebook Live is good for some things, you know. So Mike Lynch, thanks for sending into the Phil and John Zone. Um, it sounded nice good. Really nice shirt. Yeah, so no T-shirt, awesome. I got me go with my new band, go with my bandana, my my biker bandana, which is what Phil was calling me the biker earlier, because kind of had my biker look going on when I got on the show earlier. I got all kinds of looks. Got got to change it up. Uh, you are riding a uh, 1968 panhead right now. Winter cycles hat by my buddy John Winter cycles. <laughs> and he says it's kind of weird because it says I love bikes underneath here because he doesn't actually make motorcycles. He makes really cool custom bicycle frames. Bicycle. But, so then I go like then I go all the way out and put it on top of the bandana because then that just looks cool. Oh yeah, you're riding a '68 Ford. I mean, uh, Panhead. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really ride them. That's pretty cool. I my bike. That was your rider pay for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's it. That's that's we just open stuff. That was mail call. Mail call. I should have some kind of. Yeah, mail call. You got mail. You got mail. <laughs> Send all packages to 1815 Windsor Court, Water? Decatur, Illinois, 62521. Once again, that's 1815 South Windsor Court, Decatur, Illinois, 62521. I'll open up live on the show. Whatever you want to send me, please make it appropriate for work, or at least, you know, I don't want to open a big dildo on the show or something like that. I feel so bad. Knock on wood. Mama, sorry. Click, click. But $2 in the jar for me. But, yeah, yeah. So that's it. This is the Phil and John Zone improv version. We're waiting on Phil to come back to us. So I'm not going to respond to the friend request. You said don't respond. Oh, I hit respond. Oh shit! Oh uh -huh, man, that was my Facebook page. Um, <laughs> oh no! I'm, oh no! Zuckerberg! No! No! Zuckerberg! I did not click on her picture. I swear to God, I don't know this person. Respond. Delete request. Sorry, Raffi. Anyway, if you get a, if you this is a, just a note for anybody who's watching. If you get a friend request from somebody who's just showing a picture of their boobs or their butt and they got no mutual friends and they just joined Facebook two hours ago, don't add them. They're not they don't want to be your friend. Over 2,000 over two friends, too. <laughs> in, in two hours. I mean, that, that is in literally... That, that, I mean, that's that's a social uh, media class right there. I mean... Catfishing. It is catfishing. And I'm sure as you click on it, it turns into a... Uh, next thing you know, you've got to change your password and all that stuff and... I've never done that before. Do you hear me, John? I've always mm -hmm. had the girls that I've liked, and I've always at least seen them once in person, and then added them. You know what I mean? But it's even funnier when you got one mutual friend with that person who's on that list, okay? And then you go and you right. find that person, and you see who it is who's your mutual friend with this new spam girl or whatever, and you sort of feel bad for them because they've already gotten hacked, and you don't want to message them because then you'll probably get hacked too for messaging them. <laughs> In the old days, we would just call him on the phone and say, I think you got hacked, bud. You shouldn't have clicked Raffi's page, man. It wasn't the girl that you met at the beach or, you know, it wasn't somebody you thought. But there's always one or every now and then there's one or two mutual friends who have already clicked on it. And, you know, I won't name any names, you know, because good for them. They might know pictures of their material, you know. But either way, in the Phil and John zone. Yeah. Friday, May 21st, Phil and John zone number 54. Phil is in Missouri. No, no, Tennessee. And he's seeing some Mo tonight. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of that live later. Oh. I think we will, but... Jeff, have you ever seen Mo? Uh, no, I've listened to him a lot, uh, but I I haven't seen Mo. There's a festival here in Illinois where they play every year when they, they play like oh, three. Oh, that. It's basically their festival, Mo and Humphreys McGee, and they oh, take okay. turns on the main stages every night. And um, I've seen them a bunch of times because through that. Yeah. Humphreys is playing. Yeah. They play at that festival every summer, the summer camp. Yeah, Humphreys plays. They, they, oh, it's summer camp. camp. Yeah, summer camp. Yeah. Oh, okay, definitely. Um, I've heard of some. Yeah, they, they'll play in Chicago every now and then, but they don't play as much as they used to anymore, either band. Not around here. Um, we just don't get... Uh-oh. 
He he might have pooped in the bathroom. Yeah, a little bit. What's that? I said I feel like they've been playing Chicago a little bit. I've been seeing more shows now. Yeah. And hopefully they'll all be back playing shows before we know it, you know. And um, I don't know. We'll get back to the way it's supposed to be a little bit anyway. You know? Mm-hmm. That show was wild when they were like, you have to have this or you can't get in the show. I uh, I I know personally I'm, I'm very uh, anxious and excited to get back to things because I need all the exposure and word of mouth that I can right now because kind of been spotty for uh, events and uh, in private birthday parties. I've had a few here and there, um, but not not enough to make things comfortable. We'll just put it that way. I think as long as something drastic doesn't happen in the world health situation, we're probably on the road back to recovery. It, seems, it feels like and more people are out, more people, and they, mm-hmm. they change the way that we are doing things a little bit. And it's, that's scary too. You know, you, you, you know, the changes. We don't know what the hell's going on. No, nobody really knows except them doctors and them scientists. They kind of got an idea, but um, mm-hmm. change is difficult at times. And um, but we'll get through it. And I want to go to shows, so I'm going through with all of it. Whatever I got to go through with, you know, I'm beginning. Well, exactly. To- and I'm a, I'm a performer, yeah. so I'm going through with whatever I gotta do. So, yeah. Yep. I got my youngest vaccinated today. Nice. Nah, how old? She's uh 13. Yep. Wow, it's you. Yep. Yeah. So she. Yeah. Single dose or is a double dose one? Yeah, it was her first dose. Uh, the yeah. Pfizer. Yeah. So she's gonna be um three weeks, and she'll be done, and then. And the whole family, you know. Yeah, yeah, we're all. Like, like, I just got my first one today too. Oh, yeah, you got it, Autumn. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I had stabbed in the arm today. Yeah. I won't it, take uh, the other one. The second one was um, it felt like somebody Charlie horse in my arm, but it was like the whole half of my body felt Charlie horsed. But just for like, you got your done. Less than eight hours of it. Yeah, I got it, I got it all done. But it was like less than eight hours of that feeling. And we just went to bed, you know. It was like, screw it. F this day, you know. Yeah, we, I called we CBS one day and they said, yep, we got Pfizer right here. We're actually looking for people to come in and get a shot. In some places, they, they, they're they getting so much of it now and, they're, and people just aren't lining up like they were. Otherwise, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, you know. Like if it was just the flu shot or, you know, if it was something that they didn't really actually know that people needed. I don't feel like they would put it out in that kind of mass quantity. No, yeah, you no, know? there's definitely like a worldwide struggle to get you know, it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, for the people that are saying, oh, I don't want to do it, or because they're worried about something, I think that's a little so easy, yeah, you know? It's just it it's the way, it's the way we were. It's the way we were approached with it all, you know, and that's, that's the problem. It's the way it was communicated to us, you know. It wasn't communicated from our doctors to us. It was communicated from our television sets to us. So that's a different, like... When we were growing up and we were little kids, the doctors so, told us that kind of stuff. The fucking doctor, right. You might have heard something about it on the news, but it was just a story, and it wasn't the world. It, the doctor told you, and you went to see your doctor on a regular basis, so the doctor would tell you these things, and you felt more confident because they were telling you. When you hear it from, you know, Lester Holt or, or you know, God, God forbid, anybody, somebody on these news channels, you, you're you not the same kind of trust that they build in you. It's not your doctor, man. You don't, you're not going to go get show the, you know, hey, you're not going to go show the newsman yourself naked, you know, but your doctor is okay. Yeah. 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 I so could, I could. The way, they, it was the way they brought it out to us, you know, and we don't talk about that kind of stuff too heavily on the show, but it's a big deal and it's something that everybody's dealing with right yeah. now. And if I can encourage people to just go through with it, you know, and, and see how it happens, we'll get, we'll get yeah. back. And we get back to going to fucking shows and going to music and dancing and skateboarding and, and birthday so, parties and, and all of it. Normal. You know? He's sitting in the normal. restaurant without feeling nervous, you know, these kind of things. You know? where, normal, where normal isn't normal anymore. Or yeah. kind of abby normal. The thing about normal is, normal is always changing. <laughs> you think normal I'm up with I'm right. I'm right. Today was not yesterday, and tomorrow won't be today. And, and, and normal always yeah. changes. It's always fluctuating. But we, we, will we start to address, like, this is normal right now. Go to festival. Yeah, that wasn't the only I'm still know. too normal. I have to upgrade two more times to be even the old normal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the, the data database for it. I don't have enough space in my hard drive to upgrade two more times to get to what's going on in the iPhone 17 or whatever. What's, no, the, what's normal, John, anyway? The setting on a washing machine, right? That's about it, right? 
<laughs> so a, a guy walk, a kid walks up to us at a festival last weekend, and he's a young kid. He's seven years old. His name's Judah, and he says, um, "You guys got a Larry?" We're like, "We don't got a Larry. What's a Larry?" And he's like, he brings up this this item he has right here, and he says, "Everybody needs a Larry." And he says, he's like, well, what's a Larry? And he says, well, did you ever have a toy that you really wanted to play with, but you really couldn't play with it? And, he, and so we're like, well, yeah, sure, you know. And he's like, well, that's what a Larry is. And this is a seven-year-old kid telling us this stuff. And so we, he only oh. had one Larry. So we started a bidding war. Me and my friend Clyde Gill, we started a bidding war on who's going to get this Larry. And, um, and he got it to five bucks. I was too cheap. So he got the Larry for five bucks. Well, like half an hour later, the seven-year-old kid comes back over. And he's got three Larrys. He's like, hey, what's Larry's? <laughs> he's bringing us all these Larry's, and, he, and we're buying them for a dollar. We're buying them left and right. And then he's bringing them to us, and the glue's not even dry on them. He's like going back to the camper and making more of these suckers. And the, the Young uh, Larry, entrepreneur in action. A Larry is a popsicle stick, a cotton <laughs> ball, and two googly eyes. And you can shake it, but he said, don't shake it too hard. So then all weekend we were saying at the festival, don't shake your Larry's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> So tonight is, is is officially sponsored by Larry and the Larrys because there's a whole bunch of them. The kid I was like, he was well, he every time I saw him he had three more. He was selling them to somebody else. So if you went to the peaceful uh, peaceful band folk festival and you got a Larry, you're in the club, man. So Larry is, is yeah. you can't copyright that shit. It's already been patented. No, and if you're a kid, you can make them, but you got to be like under ten years old, man. Or it ain't cute, you know. <laughs> and, and Larry hangs out with Jimmy the parrot because we we're talking about Jimmy Buffett earlier. Oh, Margarita, Margaritaville. <laughs> Larry. I don't know what Larry sounds like or says. He just goes, Larry. That's all he says. So that's the kind of stuff that happens at festivals, folks. You meet seven-year-old kids that are going to be like Bill Gates someday, and they'll all start with a Larry, you know, a Larry item. like An item that's just so simple, but the kid can make so many friends. And when you're a cute kid, you'll sell them. Right. So get out there and, and make it big, kids. Come on, oh, make it big. Yeah, kids. We'll be 21. 21. 2021. Here we go. And we're ready, folks, to see what happens next. Um, we don't know. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's no word from Phil yet. He is probably in the show. I got asked. Oh, this has been a busy night. There's been a lot of stuff happening during the, the, the show. That, um, Here we go. Expecting, which is okay. Nice. Okay, so... I got the next musical bit lined up here. I'm gonna put us on another musical break. You guys can stick around if you Ooh, want to. I appreciate you. Gotta you go grab another. If you want to grab another drink, or... the wife home. What's, what's that? Okay. All right, Jeff. I'll talk to you in a little bit, bud. Yep. And we will play a song for you guys. We have a few years back, or a few years back. It feels like a few years back. Approximately a year ago, our good friend and hero Vince Herman came on the show. And played a song for us, which ended up being the title song from his new album. So we're going to go ahead and give you the last two seconds of this. Hold on. Love that. Sound. Thank you. Sound like or feel like it is. A year ago. Oh, the feelings. Oh my in the game with the red shades in the bag. We would love to have you play a song for us. You guys, Vince Herman, everybody, give it up. And um, Vince, we love you. Thank you again. Once again, it'll be coming the title track. This new album. Did to do a lot of dreaming. I've forgotten all my scheming. Just try to be in the here now. These days, full of ever more distraction. I can find my satisfaction in the faces of his good friends in the cyber screen. These are the brand new good old days that used to was stuck back here yesterday. It's never more now than it is today. These are the brand new good old days. These days. Soon, but I think it'll be spring 
before we play. Ding, ding. I can't even run. I see things on people's thumbs. It might be a mushroom, but I think that it's Friday and it's full moon anyway. These are the brand new good old days. They got a good disguise on. That's clear, folks. But it's never more down than it is today. These are the brand new. Freeze it, they touch it, they froze it. Come on, man. These days, we won't be getting any younger. Before time takes us under, I'm gonna live big every minute of every day. These days, I don't think about tomorrow. Cause that time just can't be borrowed. Tomorrow is just turned to yesterday. These are the brand new good old days. I used to was stuck back there about two months ago. <laughs> Never more now than these today. These are the brand new good old days. We gotta make these days. We got some change that's sure to be coming our way. I can make the brand new good old days. <laughs> Remember that? So, our good buddy Vince, I tell you, he's like one of my heroes, man. I, you, I could interview um, Jerry Garcia or Trey Anastasia or anything like that, but Jake, but, but. Vince Herman has always been one of my heroes. For him to come on the show and do that, do that with us, that was pretty amazing. Um, and then him being his, the title track off his new album, they just released with Leftover Sam and the brand new Good Old Days, which is a great idea. Because we got to figure out a way to get through him somewhere or another, you know? He's showing us his whole part now. He was, he was talking. There he is. He, he's back. Mm. Yeah, no. so I'm a, a big old fan of that man. That guy killed the nice. game. That was a year ago almost tonight and, and within a couple of weeks and, and we didn't have our sound together. We were playing it through a, God, I was sharing the screen through Facebook. It was a horrible, the whole thing was done wrong at the time. Or, or I mean, I'm not doing it right now, but it was way less advanced than we are now. And, um, but he was willing to come on the show with us and, and do that and sing for us. And, and, um, we've been just been lucky to have all that music. It's crazy. He's one of the good old boys. Uh, you know, that, he, is. Uh, he knows what do you, what do you got there? Autumn? What was that? Uh, I I actually wanted uh, to to ask. I wanted to do uh, one one balloon uh, one balloon uh, live for you guys. <clears throat> one of my favorite designs to do when I when I'm out and about places because uh, I'm sure we got plenty plenty of dead fans out there out and about. Oh yeah. So I uh, whenever is uh, good with you, John. I got some. Balloons laid out here, actually, Hold so on. we can make our dancing bear. Ah, I gotta see this. And uh, just because it gets really squeaky on my end, and I don't want to uh, torture your guys' ears, I'm gonna mute my end, okay? All right, folks. This is my good friend Autumn Hansen from Northern Illinois, Frankfort, Illinois. And oh, it's a little bit longer now. It's keeping going. Okay. Anyway, we have, he's gonna do he's gonna do a special performance for us here. What he does, I told you what he does. He's the balloon man. The balloon man into my hand. And the balloon, the little red balloon. You ever seen the movie The Red Balloon? Oh, it's awesome. You remember the movie The Red Balloon? You got Damon in the background? Background music. Yeah, it's like, what just some? No, it's not Damon. No, it's not Damon. Dang it! I haven't talked to Damon for a couple of weeks. Oh, the music that's playing. That's just uh, another thing that's in the free iPhone or the free iMovie thing. Okay. Nobody said I didn't like it. It's a good jam.
will he make? Folks, what will he be doing? That's the Beatles balloon so far. This is going to be good for an automatic balloon. He's first in the sky and he's pulling each close numbers. He made this one circular. He got some more change. Go, bam, bam, bam. There he goes. <laughs> To the space club mix, the jingles, and sound effects are coming back for free. I admit it feels good dance to it. time here on the Phil and John Zone, week 454, folks. If you're just tuning in now, we're experiencing the sculptures of autumn. I never used that music before, I kind of like it. Jacob Blair, thank you for sharing, bud. And thank you for sharing with one of your favorite humans, whoever that is, if it's me or Autumn or my friend Jeff Blackman or my good man Michael Michael neighbors there or Phil or whatever. You know what? There are good people all around us. We're lucky to have good people around us. I can't wait to get around with more people. I'll take a kick and hug, Jacob. Thank you, man. Things, you know, the world's a good place. There's some people out there in this world. You, you treat people well. That's all it really takes. All it really takes is to be nice and to, to be kind to folks, and you want to make, make friends like the balloon man over here. He just twisted off that balloon like it's nobody's business. Like he's, he, he used it like it's gummy bear material. Oliver Steck, thank you for the, the theme song. Thank you, Damon Trucks, for playing the weekend. Thanks to Phil Strauss for being my partner and all this good stuff. Thanks for, like, Jeff Blackman for doing five records, man. Thanks for Autumn for coming on the show and showing us what he does. Man, it's just one thing after another. He's not going to just do one step. It's going to be like five steps. It's going to be amazing, folks. I think it's time to get kind of serious here. It's time to break it down. Goodbye, a minute and a half or so here. Jeff left, he'll be back. Let's get into something. Let's, let's, let's pump it up. Look at all those little tiny pieces. He's not just making loops, dude. He's making balls and loops and flips and flaps and flops. Please get pumped by the jam. Uh oh, I'm Daddy. I bet Autumn is supposed to release a thousand balloons, maybe ten thousand balloons. Maybe half a million balloons. Probably no. Make a balloon, Make a balloon cake. Now I'm just gonna run, run out of music here, Autumn. I'm not. I got the end. I got the end piece coming. You take your time. No hurry. I'm just having fun picking the music. Anybody got a joke they want to tell? Come on the show. Links in the links in the pin below. You want to joke? You want to tell? You want to dance? You want to sing? You want to play a song? What do you want to do? Make balloons? Maybe we can do that. Uh, well, all right. Play. I'm just about finished, guys. I just need to do a little drawing, and then I'll, I'll be all set. I hey, John. You guys. For no reason. I appreciate it, brother. It's nice hanging with you. You too, Michael. You too, buddy, for sure. And look who's back, dude. Look who's Whoa. back. Mr. Yes. Hello. Hey, John. Hey, welcome back. Hey, what's oh, yeah. 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 Hello, yeah. Hello from Tennessee. We're in the parking lot at Mo. Hello. 
Remember uh, him from five times? Yeah. yeah, we're in Tennessee. Hi, John. I can't see you, John. Tennessee. Hey, hey. Hi, John. Hey, buddy. We're I'm back in. Somewhere. We're in the parking lot now. I'm in there somewhere. Swipe right. What's yeah. happening? Swipe right to the left. Rubber type pad. Hey, California kid. What's going on? How are you? Wow, a lot of guests. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm back in here for a second. I can barely hear. Yeah. I love it. No, I want to see that balloon. We want more detail. We want more detail, he says. Whatever, dude. To get awesome. away. Yeah, was... <laughs> Wonderful job, buddy. Wonderful job. And, and, and... here to play. You want more detail? Fine. I'll put my turtle back on. I know there's more to do. I, I think you have more skill to put into that bear. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I just got to keep it, keep it <laughs> quick and, have... and ongoing. Yeah. Well, what's going on there? Let's look at what Phil's doing. Let's spotlight Phil for a second. He's in a parking lot at a show where we all wish we were at. So we're going to look yes. Oh, it looks we're strange. outside. We're outside the caverns in Tennessee about to see Mo. <laughs> Not in the cavern itself, but above ground. But we can go inside. That's awesome. You get a lot of yeah, look at a view. It's beautiful We're on top. Of, I've never been here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, doesn't look like there's anybody there. Are you guys I can't here? hear it. Are you, what? People, are you the only people there? Um, there's many parking lots. We got a shuttle bus, so we got like private ride in. Nice. And we're nice. like, I, it, I don't know. They got to pick you up too? Yep. No, I mean, these roads are, I've never been here. Holy moly. And he was going like 40 miles an hour. I was like, Phew. Yeah, yeah we ain't driving now. mountain roads pretty much for the, the foothill roads out there yeah yeah it's beautiful he was I cranking see. leonard skitter i mean to the t was he really <laughs> oh i mean to the t older hippie yeah, it was a beautiful thing it, it was a beautiful ride but yeah we miss you but we filled up the, we filled up the show with balloons and friends and music and records uh we would good to see you here. phil yeah i miss you man oh, it will see you at frankfurt if not sooner I, uh, I yeah. would hope so, yes. <laughs> Try to make that sooner than that. that. Would be awesome. away. Yeah, that's, that's a long way away. I mean, it's not even... That's next hey, Lo, do you want to say hi? Uh, you want to interview Baker on the show? You, nah, he's right there. Interviewing. You know, um, you can't... Uh, <laughs> it's, not it's not legal in Tennessee. It's not legal to interview Baker? It's not legal to interview Baker's not... No, I mean, um, uh, edibles or what, anything like that. Like, you know, it's not legal in Tennessee. No, no. Uh, I just found out. Yeah. Well, hey, I think this is a Phil and John on the scene segment. Yeah, this is a new segment. Yeah, on the scene. On no, I mean, it is. He went somewhere last week and me this week. And then we got a bunch going to be together. But what's funny is I went somewhere and I couldn't figure it out. But you went somewhere and you figured it out. How weak is that? And you're supposed to be the smart man. Hey, it's not called the John and Phil zone. Well, that's why it's called the Phil and John zone. That's right, buddy. That's right, man. Oh, you're gonna have a blast tonight, Phil. Mo's a great band, man. I yeah, they're wonderful. I don't have they haven't been on the show yet. Try to get them on the show. Um, Baker knows them pretty well, and so do these cats. Um, I'm going to my group. Uh, some guys' cats come from Dyer, Indiana. Oh, the airport? I thought it was a little later. Now. They advertise yeah. your radio station. I have my show on right now. It's from right Chicago. Um, yeah. It's my friend. Go ahead. Um, look into that screen. It's my buddy from Chicago. Go ahead. How are you? Uh, what's your uh, radio station? Hey, man. 90.3 WUTK. Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Fire on the mountain. Heck yeah. Uh, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. In. What's your name, yeah. brother? Yeah, straight up, man. No balls. <laughs> Do it, man. Thank nice. you. Well, Big shouts out. Fish. I didn't know what time. No, Yo. I'm fucking this whole bit. No, no, no. But I got here yeah. what time. Well, a lot of people watching. I do believe. No? You like to, you'd like to believe that that's that there's a lot of people watching. Most people that are watching are in the room with us. You know what? Hey, we're we just hanging here. out. It doesn't always give me an accurate number. Hey, there's two or three people right there. Hey, Charlotte. Yeah, I heard Todd Snyder's going to be on the show tonight. Are you, is, what? <laughs> Todd Snyder's going to be on the show tonight. You missed it. You son of a bitch. No, <laughs> you can't even spell the name right, I bet. I'm going to find a guy named Todd Snyder 
and I'm going to invite him on the show. <laughs> kind of a gun. He could be here in Tennessee for all I know. He could be. He's in East Nashville. He could be there, actually. Actually, he... Phil's going to find him at the show tonight. Looking for the tall, dancing hippie. You well, I brought a couple Mo albums, and he's going to go, you're that guy from that show. You're that album guy. Yeah. Oh, that one. He's out of Nashville, though? He's out of East Nashville, yeah. So he's actually closer to you than Nashville. Huh. But he might be touring. I think he might actually finally be back on the road. He, I think he probably has shows tonight. And he's something he was getting well, shows coming up, wasn't he, Jeff? No, he's doing something tonight at uh, 7.30 your time, I think. Tonight, actually. Online? Yeah, I saw it posted yesterday. Okay. He's doing an interview with interview or a concert at hmm. some place. If he wasn't doing an interview with me because he doesn't like to do Zoom stuff, and I understand there's a lot of talking over and stuff. And well, maybe, maybe he was supposed to be at Shoot Fest, uh, what, two years ago, and then something happened, uh, Neil. Yeah. Yes. Maybe they'll come back and we'll get to meet him. That'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll, I think I'm going to meet him before you, actually. Probably going to meet him tonight, dude. I'm going to say I'm John Griffin. Yeah, he's not meeting him tonight because he's doing something. No, I think he's actually playing tonight. Yeah, Wait, wait a minute. That's him right there. I'm going to go talk to him. Hold on. I'll be right back. Yeah, go find him right now. <laughs> Why, no, we, we got Phil. What? Phil, you want to say anything about sports, man? Okay, sports. Oh, um, not what I'm going to do. Let him no. cue you up. You know what? I don't know what's going Sports with Phil. Well, let's just play over while he's talking. That's even better. <laughs> Good. You got it, Phil. Yeah. There's only certain times you can go in. We can't go in, and we have to go in at six thirty. It's like they, you know, so they it's so they time people going in. I don't understand. So we're in a parking lot, pre-partying, but you can't bring anything in. Uh, that's the way it always goes. That's that's. Cold. So we went to the grocery. We went to Piggly Wiggly and bought styrofoam coolers, and everybody's partying up here. And see that lizard over there. See that? I don't know. If I go close up here, I should. I'm going to walk that way as I'm talking. But yeah, all these. Yeah, we're early, but uh, it feels good. Um, you got any albums? Yeah, I got. <laughs> I made five actually. I bought three tonight, and I'm going to bring two tomorrow night. We're going. Yeah, I got five mo, and it says the caverns above. Can we get a, can we get a sneak peek on the on the album? Yeah, I'm gonna give yeah. it to you. Go to the lizard, and I'll turn on that three. Yeah. Can't get a little sneak peek or what? Yeah, I'm gonna show them to you. Uh, right. Nice. See it? No, it was a video one. No. Yeah. Let's oh, see on the How big screen. screen. The lizard is called Sally, our tour guide, or their our, uh, it's the bus. The bus guy. Yeah, the bus. He, oh, he looks like big. 70. Oh, he cranked Leonard Skinner. We couldn't even talk. And he was going like 50 miles around curves. Was he it stopped fun? and goes, all I want you guys to have is a good time. So we're doing shots on the bus. It was pretty fun. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm driving. That's why uh, the girls picked out. I'm going to show you the bow albums real quick. All right. Yes, please. Here's one. Let's see it. Oh, that's cool. And they're all neon and glow in the dark. There's one. Caverns, all the little rolling stuff. I like that. There's a buzz. The caverns are buzz. I like this one. I like my clown. I can't see it. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, the, uh, I love that. That's cool. <laughs> and with the uh, revol uh, evolution of LED lights, when you put them on, I use uh, the neon and glow, and they really uh, turn different things. <laughs> You're unfamiliar with the You're on the show. Laura, Laura, Zoom it. Not doing it anymore. What are Tennessee, but that was it. Oh, I said hello. They, 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 he was on the show. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm glad you came back, Phil. We were about ready to give up on you. We were getting ready to say good night to everybody, and then. Well, I'm coming on at eight o'clock when they go on. I'm coming on at ten, and the two thirty party were raving in the woods. 
with you armadillos and black bears. You know, can join. So, Phil, wait, you can. This is. What? Everybody's writing the times down. Yeah, wrong. Phil, do you know no. how to go to Facebook on your phone? What? Can you go to Facebook on your phone? Can you do your Facebook on your phone? I'm doing through the, I don't know, not my phone. My, are two of the phones, two out of three, there's, this is a brand new-ish phone. Are the other two, which are pretty good, didn't work. And now I'm I'm on top of a mountain, dude, not a hill. I can raise I'm sure a lot of the people, if anybody's phone. watching, has been to the caverns. It's pretty, pretty wild. So I could raise $200 for you and get you like a new iPhone or like a, a, a number eight iPhone or something that's like 10 years old. But eight? Still awesome. Eight? They got that high? I think we got negative three. You could go live from those shows and you could do the live streams, you know, and stuff. But then you got to hold the phone. No. Yeah, we do need some. I got to keep telling, uh, getting Amazon uh, stuff at the door. It's funny, no people wear masks here. I mean, anywhere, Don. I got my second shot, man, the other day. That was wicked. Are you I feeling? just got. Uh, I just got um, my first. Uh, yeah, grenade. I got the day before we left. I was in the car being a zombie, and I'm not a zombie, but if, I'm good. You don't have to do it, but I did. I got two. I'm done. It's in my well, wallet. You feel better? It's no. What's the difference? Oh, I feel better today. Yeah, yeah. I didn't drink nothing yesterday. Just no, 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 no. Nope. Ten hour ride, passenger. That was the weird part. Being a passenger, I always drive. I probably told you this before. I always drive. <laughs> what I did today for Phil. Here, I'll show this. Ooh. Look at all those records. Woo, cool. I got Packy London. I got High Hawks. I got stuff that didn't even happen. I got that one that I was going to give to my friend, but then he, I haven't talked to him since then, so I hung it on the wall. <laughs> when are you going to? When is Hartford? In June? Two weeks. Two weekends from now. In two weeks. Next weekend, I got Coach Ella, a goat. Cella and sandwich. Yeah, I just got it. Yeah, um, walking around, getting the cooler. The rocks are huge. We're in the freaking mountains. Um, and then we're gonna start rolling. Uh, mm-hmm. June, July, special August, September. You know, we're gonna be together like four and five days sometimes. Four days, like Blue Ox and Shoe. I certainly hope so. With our dogs, I'm thinking about Blue Ox and Chester. I can't uh, that long. I'm deliberating. Four days away from you know, three days away right now is pretty long. Even though it's not. That'd be so much fun. Yeah, um, it's a possibility. You know, I was telling him, Phil, he would be like the most awesome thing to add to Bubbles Art and Records. Ever. Okay. Ever. Well, well, we know I can talk yeah. to Matt. And I can reach out, and I'll get a whole. Like, you know, I'm talking to you like I'm on the phone. Duh. Um, yeah. Uh, Matt wants to come on the show. We were you were gone last week. I'm gone this week. I'll write Matt this week and see when he wants to come on. Got him. But, and then he wants he wants to come on also about and talk about. Uh, I, I do believe about what's you know shoe fest coming up. Maybe he can give us a hint of a band possibly, and. Uh, you think it's gonna I, could, I was trying to. Yeah. I know he's trying to get fish and uh, widespread panic. Uh, nah, uh, 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 uh. He's just trying to make it happen. What he's trying to do. <laughs> yeah, after you're off, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I'll just go to the parking lot and grab one. I have no idea. Have you been here before? I have no idea. No, I've We're, never been here. Uh, like again, we didn't we drive. We through... What's the name of the town you're in? <laughs> I have no clue. What town is this? Like Tracy City. Like Tracy City. Like Tracy City. I, I, I up, Hold on. Pelham. Pelham, Tennessee. Does Baker want to say anything? So, Tennessee accent. Yeah. Does Baker have any wisdom? What? Does Baker have any wisdom? Which okay, hold on. He probably does. He got lost today. Well, the girls. Yeah, um, loaded. Loaded. Okay, he will. He's looking at these people have seen Mo for some 50, 60 times. 70. There's some wild shirts. I mean, they're going back to their. I mean, there's some experts here. Um, 
Uh, loaded. Oh, he's on my phone. I, can't. I don't. I James. So anyways, this James. Hey, he's, he's giving somebody the wisdom right now. To give John wants the words word of wisdom. What's your, okay? Word of you have a question? A word of wisdom. A word of wisdom. You want me to give out a word of wisdom? Yeah. Uh, don't eat the yellow snow's been taken. Um careful of bears in the woods and yes dale dale loves you i don't know if that's a word of wisdom or not but dale, dale loves you dale watson my good friend baker baker all right love baker. you guys love you too, peace bro. have fun right. tonight enjoy that shit oh I'm not going to you'll have a blast i know it, it's I'll just around yeah. Hey, you. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, Michael. I'm gonna say goodbye to you for right now, and we're gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna go because Phil. I can barely hear you, and and um, because it's 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 breaking up. But thank you for coming out, Michael, and good to see you, bud. Real good to see you. And there's hot air balloons flying everywhere, John. Uh, 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 uh. Hot air balloons. That's awesome. No, no, I mean, there was a hot, hot air balloon flying over the mountains. I thought it was, gonna, yeah, it was pretty wild. Well, Phil and John's on week 54. Phil, Phil, you have week 54. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, John Griffin. Thanks for coming back. Thank you, Charlotte, for the phone. Um, you, going to see Mo two nights. Everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you soon. And me and John will be at a lot of festivals together doing the Phil and John zone and pinning up a storm. Love you all. Happy Friday night. Woo! Later, later well, tonight. Sure yes, we'll bye, John. Like, we'll make it look like Dale like is you, driving. Love you, John. We'll I'm gonna sign like off. All right, you can talk to your. All right, Charlotte. We can do whatever we want. I'm out here. I'm going to uh, <laughs> the other side of the Phil John zone. Thank you for coming on the show. Much love. Peace. <laughs> I'm just giving you some out outro music. Phil and John show. Send me a drink. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. With commentary that's rich and deep now. And on the bad topics that will bring you out sound. You ought to know what the part is after you go. Yeah. Is that what I said?